welcome to day one of our workshop with none other than Jason Wardrobe. We're going to teach you how to get hundreds and hundreds of organic leads per day for your agency. Now, Jason is someone I've met uh, a few years ago now, when uh, I think when he first jumped on board with the uh, big wave of high level and, uh, you know, who's an early adopter, one of our power affiliates, if that's the right word, uh, Kelsey called them the commanders of the Space Cadet or however she handles it. I love it. Uh, Jason, welcome into our workshop, man. I think this is the first big live event we've done with you. And it's, it sounds crazy. <laughs> yeah, man. No, I. Thanks for having me. It's exciting to be here, and uh, I'm excited to share with everyone some some cool stuff. Hopefully, yeah. So, Jason, what's your story? Before we get started with the workshop, I know there's a ton of different things. <laughs> you know, what's your story in the agency space? Tell us a little bit about your story in the affiliate side too, because I know that's a big part of your brand and what you're building. Give us your yeah. uh, you know story as we're going to spend the next three days together. <laughs> yeah, man. Well, I'll, I'll hit this kind uh, of kind of brief. Um, we'll, I'll share some more things later on in this the workshop, but uh, I've been doing digital marketing, kind of the entrepreneurial thing for 10 plus years. Um, most of that uh, very unsuccessful um, first, probably, you know, several years kind of dabbling in it. And then it was like 2014, I kind of got into the agency space and I had, you know, I was bringing on a few clients here and there, more of the full service, like ad management type stuff. And then, um, I, I partnered up with a developer. We started building out a software 2015. We officially like launched that software, raised a little bit of money so we could bring on some developers full time and, um, grew that software. It wasn't originally in the, the real estate space, but I ended up being in the real estate space. Um, grew that one quite a bit, exited that business in 2021, early 2021. And then after that, I was kind of just like, you know, young, hungry entrepreneur. I was ready for the next thing. I was exploring a lot of the stuff that was out there. And somehow, I, I honestly still can't even remember. I somehow ended up on a Zoom call <laughs> with Sean Clark. And he was telling me what their their goals were, what your guys' goals were with uh, SaaS mode. It was right before SaaS mode was released. And I was like, man, that's that's game changer. I was like super sold on the opportunity, what was going on. Um, and I was like, you know what, I, I feel like I could, you know, send a lot of people your way as an affiliate. I'd never done any affiliate marketing, um, up until, well, truth is I had done affiliate marketing on ClickBank probably back in like 2010, made probably 50 <laughs> bucks in like six months. And then I was like, all right, I'm, I'm, I gotta get onto the next thing. So, um, but yeah, man, it's been fun. It's a great, been a great partnership with high level. Um, awesome to see the, the growth and the building of the tools. And I was just, I was telling some people from the first summit in Dallas to the second one. So cool to see, like, obviously the first summit was amazing, but the growth up to the second summit and even the number of award winners and just seeing like everything that was happening, it was really exciting um, to be a part of something that is, is growing like high level is. Yeah. It's a, it's quite yeah. the journey to see all sides grow. So like I, I look at the internal growth, obviously, with our company, we're at like 800 plus full time now, which is yeah, insane. It's insane. And I also see the growth on the outside of like people like yourself and other power affiliates and other power ecosystems and essentially brands that are built around high level that are growing. And it's it's really interesting to see like I don't know if I should call it a movement, but but I I, I feel like it is, it, it's just there's a group of people that are together to do the right thing in the in the world of marketing, which is yeah. serve customers at the best level possible, and that's a change that I think marketing has never seen before. Because usually we have the bad rap of like, hey, here's you know we'll grab the retainer and not fulfill properly and the customers are upset but high level has changed that song about marketers in my in my mind because we've allowed and gave the power back to the marketers where they could deliver you know really really cool things to their end customers so you know i also find it fascinating jason that 
you only made 50 bucks uh, on your initial, you know, <laughs> affiliate marketing run, which is incredible because what you've done in the affiliate space is, uh, I think it's, you know, something to look at for a lot of people to learn. I don't even know if you have courses around that, but uh, we love a lot of your YouTube channel, you know, content and things like that. I've, I've looked at a lot of them early on and uh, found inspiration. And uh, Ch Chase Buckner also, you know, I share that same sentiment with him, but Let's do this. Um, let's set the agenda for day one on what we will cover today. And maybe, um, and just kind of, if you want to share your screen and go through yeah, some man. slides and let's get, let's get right to it. And those of you that are excited, if you're not excited as I am, I don't know what to tell you because this is completely free education to help you grow your agency. Give us a one in the comments, in the chat. If you have heard of Jason Wardrobe or if you've seen some of his content, uh, or maybe, you know, if you followed a lot of the things that he's done and now we're about to do uh, uh, an entire work three day workshop together. Uh, and remember, put the comments in the Facebook streaming, not in the Zoom chat. When you when you put the comments in the Zoom chat, you're actually just personally messaging me, which I appreciate, but I don't need any more messages. So make sure you're commenting in the Facebook group streaming. The streaming link is inside the chat. Let me just add that one more time here. Here you go. So everyone can go there. OK, cool. Awesome. Um, give us a one if you can see the screen. I think we're good to go. I can see the screen. Um, what you're awesome. sharing. OK, cool. Awesome. Awesome. Let's get started. Okay. Awesome. Thanks, Paulson. Um, before we dive into things, I kind of want to get a, an idea of who is on. Um, so yeah, comment on the Facebook group. And Paulson, you might have to help me kind of get some feedback here because I can't see that. I've got my screen up. But just curious, how many are already high-level users that are watching this? Just type a yes if you are, a no if you're not. I um, just kind of want to get uh, a gist for the, the demographics so I know how to kind of best tailor this yeah. for everyone. Yeah, let's see. Um, I'm seeing some comments. Let's see here. Um, actually, a few people saying no. I'm I'm brand new to all of this. Um, I'm getting yeses, nos, yeses, nos. Um, okay. Brady says she's been with us for three years with hundred plus clients. Um, Legit. <laughs> let's see. Benjamin says yes. Uh, Victor says I'm about to be, but I'm on the. All phone. right. All right. <laughs> Well, okay. Uh, well, so also <laughs> while we're kind of getting those comments coming through, I'm just curious for those of you guys who do have an account, obviously it sounds we've got a mix of, of newbies, not newbies. Um, how many of you have a client, at least one, just type a one in the chat. If you have at least one and a zero, if you have zero and, and guys, there's no shame. If you have zero, like I just said a minute ago, I, I struggled for probably three, four years before I even really made any real money. <laughs> Um, so no shame, just, just do a zero or one so we can get a, a rough idea on that. Yeah, there is a ton of zeros and ones, actually. Um, okay. A lot, more, a lot more zeros than ones, actually. Okay. Uh, yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, I'm seeing the streaming here. Uh, let's see. A few ones are coming in now. So it's a mix. It's a mix. Okay. And then one, one last question, because this is going to be kind of diving in kind of bringing it all together with what we're going to be talking about over the next three days how many of you feel like and and we'll go with a, a five if, if it's a yes do a five because we're we've already used the yes and no so we can kind of distinguish um whether, whether it's a, a yes so do the number five um how are you confident if i were to say go get a lead to go get a new client for your business are you confident that you have a strategy and a blueprint to go and get that first or next lead for your business? So do a number five if, you, if you're saying yes, and a number, we'll do number four if that's a no. I know this is getting confusing, but five, five if yes, four <laughs> if no. Yeah, we're seeing a lot of fours. Okay. A few fives coming in now. Uh, okay. Yeah, it's a mix as well. Again, um, some people are saying I'm just getting started, so I'm not confident just yet, but I will be. <laughs> All right, see. guys. Well, well, enough of the interrogation. I know I've asked a lot of questions already, um, but today, um, then over the next three days, actually, we're going to be talking about the topic, obviously, of the workshop, which is how to get 100 to 200 leads per day 
for your SaaS agency, your, your, if you're not going the SaaS routes, your agency, it just your business, online business in general, mm -hmm. right? Um, and the best part about this is I'm going to show you guys how to do this. Even if you have no money um, for paid ads, even if you have no following, even if you're just a beginner, it looks like we've got a lot of beginners on here. Um, this strategy will work and maybe you're not getting 100, 200 leads per day right out of the gate. But if you're consistent with this, this is the blueprint that I literally use all of 2023. Um, I'm usually a huge paid ads guy and I love spending money on paid ads. Uh, I, I also know how to convert that paid ads into actual revenue. Um, but I actually, I just took my pedal off the gas on paid ads in 2023 because this was working so well and just doing this organically. All right. Um, and the reason, okay, let me see here. All right, there we go. And the reason why I want to cover this with you guys, and I know there's a lot of workshops that, that have been going on, a lot of awesome workshops, all really cool stuff. Um, the reason why I feel like lead generation is the key to all this is you have to generate leads at scale to be successful with this business. You just, you have to, right? If you see over here without marketing, which we're going to show you this marketing blueprint, you have no leads, right? Without leads, you have no sales. Without sales, you have no revenue. Without revenue, you have no business. Just a really expensive hobby, kind of like when I was just getting started, right? And making the 50 bucks in six months. That's that's no fun for anyone. And a, a lead, let, let's really quick define what a lead is. I threw the slide in here last minute. And then um, now as I'm going through this, I get a lot of questions all, all the time when I'm talking about leads on YouTube. And people are like, well, what's a lead, Jason? Like, what does that even mean? Um, and so leads are kind of different. Everyone uh, qualifies a lead at a different point, right? But for me, a lead is someone's name, maybe their phone number, but at least their email address of someone that is interested in what you have to offer what your business is, what you've got going on, right? And so the goal is um, is to build up an email list or a database of people that show interest in whatever you're offering because that's the only way that you can make sales and then create revenue and actually have a real business, right? Um, and if you guys stick with me here to the end of this workshop today and then obviously the, the next two days, we're gonna be covering a lot of cool stuff, but I want to give you guys all of my templates that I'm going to be showing you guys over the next little bit. I'm going to give you my scripts. So we're going to talk a lot about different um, marketing scripts, different things like that. I'll just give you guys for free um, SOPs. So that stands for standard operating procedures, how to go through and actually implement this into systems and make this happen for your business. Sales funnels. So the simple websites that we use and uh, over 4k in courses. So um, that's, if you go to my websites and you go buy these courses individually, it's going to total over, um, $4,000 there. And, uh, so that's, uh, if you guys hang with us here to the end, um, but this blueprint that I'm going to be giving you guys, it's going to help you grow literally anything that you want to online. It's going to help you grow your email list, which my personal opinion, that is like the number one thing, um, growing your email list, be able to go through and blast out an email to a lot of people, get their attention, let them know of new offers. It's going to allow you to grow a Facebook group. And we're going to talk about how to go through and do that over the next couple of days. I have a Facebook group. It's only got like 8,000 people, but like I have, honestly, I haven't even really promoted it. Right. And, and so it's just kind of like trickle and people trickling in on the back end. Instagram following, I haven't really ever focused on that, but my YouTube following, for a lot of you guys that follow me, I have over 200,000 subscribers on YouTube. And it's not because I had some crazy viral video or you know I'm like doing all this cool stuff to this mass market audience. It's because I have literally been implementing the blueprint I'll be showing you guys. And I've been doing it for you know five plus years, right? And it'll allow you to grow your TikTok following, Whatever, if you want to like go of the vanity metrics, the social media follows and grow that, it's going to help you do any of that. But more importantly, it's going to help grow your agency's revenue, right? That's kind of, I think, why we are all here is to, to make some money, right? Yeah, um, absolutely. And by the way, those of you that are watching and maybe you don't have an agency, maybe you're not 100% decided on SaaS just yet. Maybe you're a small business owner directly that somehow trickled into high level. But either way, this workshop's going to apply to all of you. It's not just a SaaS thing, just FYI. This will apply as long as you have a business and you need inbound leads that are coming your way so you don't have to go chase them at the end of the day. So who's this Who's this guy? This guy looks familiar. 
<laughs> Paulson, thanks, thanks for making that comment. Because honestly, guys, to, just to double down on what Paulson said, any business, right? Like if you're a course creator, a coach, a local business, um, I'm an I'm an affiliate right now. Like this blueprint will work for generating leads and digital marketing. Um, but this guy right here, honestly, I I don't I don't know his name. I'm not I'm not a huge uh, fan of the the band Kiss. But I love what the acronym KISS stands for. And I don't know how many of you guys have heard the acronym KISS. I first heard it when I was probably eight or nine years old. I was in a tennis lesson. My yeah. tennis coach was like, look, you just got to You got to kiss. You got to keep it simple, stupid. Right. Yep. <laughs> and so um, I know there's there's probably a lot of trainings and workshops, a lot of YouTube videos, a lot of stuff out there where people try to make things complex and complicated and um, I've seen posts in the Facebook group of people building out these crazy workflows and automations and following up for 500 days and all this cool stuff. And, and it is, it's cool. But at the same time, the longer I'm in this game, the longer I'm in this business, the, the more I realize that simplicity works, right? It's, it's not like you don't want to get distracted by all these crazy, intense complexity things that are going on out there just keep it simple. Right. And, and if you guys have been following me for some time now, if you've ever watched any of my trainings, videos or anything like that, I like to be straight to the point, keep things as simple as possible. And the big reason why is just the other day I was writing in my journal, I was kind of recapping 2023 and I was, I was thinking about, okay, what, what lessons have I learned in 2023? Has anyone ever done that? Um, go, gone through and just recap the year. Like, what have I learned? What, what was good? What was bad? So I was recapping and honestly, at the very top of the page, I like the number one thing that I, I learned and it was more of like a, a, a relearn and just like a, just kind of keep at the top of my mind was just consistency is king, right? And so if things are simple, it's easier to be consistent, right? Um, because you look at all this, like whether it's working out, you want to go through and you want to lose weight, you want to get strong. The number one way to do it is consistency, eating healthy or being in the gym, whatever it is, and and simplicity. And so that's kind of the, the name of the game, even in, in this area of, of life with business, right? Um, and so real quick, and I know we, we already hit this um, just a minute ago. I'll hit this really quick because this training, it's more about you guys getting some real value than it is about me talking about myself and long-winded stories, all that. Uh, but my name is Jason Wardrop. If uh, you guys are kind of brand new, I've never heard of me or whatever. Um, this is, I, I was on a panel at the first high level summit talking about affiliate marketing, been doing digital marketing for over 10 years, started my own real estate CRM software company. It was kind of a software agency hybrid, um, like a lot of high level businesses are now. Uh, grew that to over 15,000 paying clients, exit that business in April, 2021, then kind of mid uh, 2021 started promoting high level and now uh referred over 25,000 people to high level, right? Um, and so I want to show you guys today what's worked extremely well for me and then what's also worked for a lot of other people that I've gone through and shared these techniques with, right? So, excuse me, just a quick disclaimer though, this is just one way, okay? This is one way and it's worked really well for me and it's worked really well for a lot of others, but I'm not saying it's the only way, right? I, I know there's a lot of different strategies out there to generate leads, get customers, all that stuff. Um, and so a lot of, the, honestly, a lot of, if not all of those ways work, but for maximum results, you want to stack this with other client acquisition strategies, okay? Now, the reason why I'm kind of biased towards this method is because it uses my probably my, my, my best friend guys. And, and that is leverage, right? So leverage, if you want to grow any business at scale, you have to use leverage. And that has kind of been the number one thought. I, I remember, you know, as a kid growing up, my dad would always talk about leverage. I didn't really fully understand it, but it just kind of always been in the back of my head. And that's even, you know, as I was growing my business with the real estate CRM, got over 15,000 paying clients. We had no sales team, no marketing team. It was just me doing everything. Um, and then even now today, it's just me doing um, affiliate for, for high level. And I have two VAs, but we've been able to go scale at 25,000 referrals. And it's because I focus on leverage and simplicity, right? 
And so the three key things that I want to focus on leveraging for myself, and I want to show you guys how you can leverage it for yourself as well, is leveraging your time, right? Because that's something that we never get back, um, more valuable than money by far. Um, how to leverage media, so social media, all these different platforms, uh, and then uh, software, right? Um, in, in software, the, the beauty about it, and I honestly, it's funny because I started a software company. I didn't really fully understand why, why software is so valuable. And the reason why software is so valuable is because it um, automates the manual repetitive tasks that you do. Think about any type of software. It simplifies things and it automates manual repetitive tasks. Okay. And so that's why we're using software. And then um, lastly, the beauty of software is that that sweet monthly recurring revenue, right? Whereas as you you kind of go through and leverage and it build up this, this massive audience and base, um, you kind of have a consistent um, blueprint of how many users, how much money you're going to be making month over month, right? Now, real quick, uh, who this workshop is for. And we kind of hit that a little bit. Paulson was talking about this, but this is entrepreneurs, guys. This is any type of business owner it may, and maybe you're you're you know a small local business owner you don't call yourself an entrepreneur but at the end of the day if you're a business owner you kind of are an entrepreneur right and you're an entrepreneur looking for consistency and predictability in their business right now i'm just curious like how many of you guys would love to have some consistency go ahead and let me know over there in the chat the yeah, consistency and predictability in your business consistent leads consistent sales predictable outcomes knowing exactly where your next lead's coming from, your next sale, and know exactly what it's going to take to meet your goals. And, and Jason, as these comments are coming in, I see a few people commenting already. Can you, I know there's a ton of people, we're already at like about a thousand in the Zoom room. So I, we, we have a cap at a thousand. So there's okay. waiting. So those of you that are watching from the waiting room, go into the Facebook group. We're not going to let any more people into the Zoom. So just, just, I don't want you to wait there for the next three days or the rest of the day today. So <laughs> Early jump in early like eleven forty five and the first you know couple of hundred jumps in. Uh, but before we go any further, there's a ton of people in here, Jason, that don't have any idea about high level. They're brand new to the world of high level. Mm. They just hear the buzzwords of high level this, high level that. And is it all good to be true? And we all know that all in one type of solution is not all that what it used to be or what it you know pretends to be. Can you share? A little bit about the whole SaaS thing, because I know you mentioned you started off as a SaaS entrepreneur essentially before I, you know, affiliate marketing. Can you, you said the sweet monthly revenue makes sense, but can you explain for maybe one minute why the SaaS mode and the whole SaaS thing is a big deal in today's marketing world? Yeah, I love it, man. So quick, quick uh, synopsis of high level, just to keep it simple. Um, it's an all-in-one sales and marketing solution, right? So you've got your websites. If you've ever heard of kind of the, the buzzword sales funnels, there's there's a lot of sales funnel softwares out there. Email marketing, text message marketing, marketing automation, CRMs. Have you ever heard of any of those, those terminologies? It's it's all of those all into one software. And and so that was one big like thing that got me like hooked on high level. Cause I'm like, man, I can cancel all these other software subscriptions. I, I was saving, once I finally moved my business over to high level, I was saving over $15,000 per year in software subscriptions. So 15 grand a year, quite a bit of money right there. But then the bigger thing that kind of sold me on it all was the, the ability to take a software. So think about any software that, that you use, right? Um, and, and even like, let's, let's call Netflix a software. It's a software that delivers um, movies and, and entertainment content, right? Think about what if you could take your favorite software, a Netflix, and instead of selling it as Netflix, you sell it as your company name, whatever company that you want to name that company. You put your logo on it. You connect it to your own domain, you know, johndoe.com. And you connect your own payment processor. And so instead of Netflix collecting the 10, 15, 20 bucks a month, how they keep up in their price? I don't know what their prices are now. You're <laughs> you're keeping a hundred percent of that, right? And and so 
you think about that and then Netflix users, they just, they don't even think about it. They just pay their 15, 20 bucks a month, every single month. And the more users Netflix gets on, the more money they make and they just keep stacking up that month recurring revenue, which the beauty about that is then you're not having to start at zero at the beginning of every single month, right? At the next month, you're like, all right, well, this last month we had, let's say a hundred people on paying a hundred bucks a month. So we're, what was that 10 grand a month? So this next month, even if we have one or two cancel and we're getting a couple more, like we're going to at least have a pretty solid base. So that is the beauty of high level for me and what I show other people how to do is go white label high level, which white labels means basically take that software, put your own logo on it, connect to your own domain, connect your own payment processor, bring on as many clients as you want, whatever type of clients you're trying to bring on. You set your price points. You collect 100% of that revenue coming in and you don't have to split any of that money with high level. So right, you get the so, benefits of a software company without having to go raise millions of dollars to go develop a bunch of stuff in Brazil and India and then hope it actually fits the market. We're, we're actually solving the market product fit on top of that, right? Exactly, exactly. And, and, and just to kind of put it in comparison real quick, the, the big thing is, so the highest plan on high level is 500 bucks a month. That's if you, you know, they have down at 97 a month up to 500 and in comparison, when I was building out my own real estate CRM, we were spending over $40,000 a month just on software developers. That's not support people. That's not like 40 grand a month just on developers. And, and we weren't developing at nearly the speed that high level is. So to kind of compare that of like, if you want to go start your own software company, well, good luck. Cause you're already, you know, <laughs> going to need to have 40 grand. And then also that is, it takes months to build just one basic feature, right? Especially if you only have like a limited development team, which 40 grand a month is a limited development team. You go build a big development team, you're in the hundreds of thousands of dollars a month where versus you got high level, which is all these features, all this benefit for 500 bucks a month and years of development that you could just come in right away and take advantage of all that. Yeah. And two, two questions come out of that from a lot of people over the years that I've, you know, basically helped uh, people ask, well, if, if it's 500 bucks and the pricing never changes, how does high level make money? Right. That's a big question. And the way we make money, just so you guys all know, and I think it's common knowledge now is through blade revenue. So we have relationships with companies like Stripe, PayPal, um, authorized.net, um, Twilio, obviously, in any any systems that integrate within the within the parent system, we will have relationships there where we will, you know, create creatively find ways to add monetaries to our our world of um, profits. And and the reason why that matters a lot to you guys is because your price point will never change. We will never get to a world we add more taxing to the agencies or the MSPs or the providers uh, that build these automations out. So essentially, if you're familiar with like the IT world, you we, this is the new revolution of the MSP model happening inside the marketing world. Anyways, don't mean to get you off on a tangent there, Jason, but I just wanted to make sure People understood what we mean by the word SaaSpreneur or SaaS mode or these types of things, especially yeah. you know, as we get started. And there's a ton of new people that don't even have buy level on the stream today. No, I love it, man. I, I appreciate you stopping me and make sure we've got uh, kind of some <laughs> of the basics covered here. Yeah. Um, so anyway, yeah, this this is for for you if you're you're looking for consistency in your business, predictability. Um, I know when I was kind of a newer entrepreneur. I would just set a goal. You know, we're, we're kind of the, the for beginning of the year. We got New Year's resolutions. We're setting up our goals for 2024. And, you know, when at the beginning, I'd be like, I'm going to make 100K this year. And just being a naive new entrepreneur, I had no idea what that looked like, right? I, I th There was no predictable outcomes. Of, like, I didn't know, do this, do this, do this, and it's going to result in this amount of money. Or I'm going to make a million bucks this year, right? Whereas what I want to do is over the next three days, be able to help you say, okay, you have this $100,000 per year goal that you're wanting to hit this year or a million or whatever the number is and be able to reverse engineer that number and see what are the inputs that I need to do in my business to get the desired outputs. 
because at that it it becomes very simple and straightforward and you know how to kind of back your way into this right um so what you need to win with this whole model is you need four simple things right one you need a specific audience someone who you're marketing to one, um, number two, you need a rock solid offer, just one. You don't need like multiple crazy different things of like all this complexity. Uh, number three, you need consistent lead flow, which we'll talk about tomorrow. And then number four, we need a proven follow up. Okay. And if you, you've heard of this, if you've been in kind of business for some time, and I know a lot of people haven't, but there's a term is or a little slogan saying it is the fortune is in the follow up, right? Uh, because you can be generating 100, 200 leads per day, but if you're not following up with those leads, it's really, it's not going to benefit you whatsoever, right? And I know a lot of these, you look at these kind of four things, you've probably seen some videos on YouTube about, you know, nailing down your niche and your audience, your offer, all this stuff. Um, but I, I guarantee you the things that we're going to show you to the, uh, the next couple of days, it's different, all right? I want to show you how to systematize everything. I want to show you how you never have to wonder what you should post on social media, what you should send out as an email, what you should be offering, and ultimately just give you a very straightforward blueprint. I, I like very actionable, simple, straightforward things um, when I'm learning, and so that's how I like to deliver my education as well. Um, now, how many of you, just let me know in the chat, how many of you guys read the book, The One Thing? This is one of my favorite books. And honestly, I would say probably the most pivotal book that I've read in my entrepreneurial journey. I read it back December of 2015. So it's been a little over eight years now. I read it on my honeymoon. And I remember reading it, you know, poolside, honeymoon, just, you know, reading it. I, I, someone had recommended it to me. And um, if you guys have ever read this book, it's it's a pretty simple message but it it makes so much sense as you dive into it. So the one thing, and actually this is, uh, I, this is before we dove into the real estate space, but this is a, a real estate book. So Gary Keller, he is one of the founders of Keller Williams, right? Um, so the one thing, basically the whole premise of this book is when you're going through and setting goals, and it's kind of fun doing this at the beginning of the year when a lot of people are setting your goals and, and kind of evaluating different things in your life. I highly recommend if you haven't read it, go read this, but he goes and he analyzes all the different categories of your life, right? Uh, fitness, uh, financial, family, social, like all these different um, areas of your life. And as you're setting goals or you're looking to improve, he talks about what is the one thing that you can focus on that's going to make everything simpler, faster, better, or even irrelevant, right? So like, what is the one thing that you could focus on? So for example, with like fitness, a lot of times people begin of the year, they're like, man, I want to, this is going to be the year I'm going to lose some weight. Um, and so if you think about it, what is the one thing? Obviously, there's a ton of different workouts out there. You could do yoga, CrossFit, HIIT workouts, powerlifting, all these different things. But what is the one thing that's kind of the core of just losing weight, right? And it basically be simplifying it down to a caloric deficit. If you burn more calories than you intake each day, you will lose weight right? Um, so just kind of like focus on what, what are these simple things? And still to this day, eight years later, after reading this book, and I've got right in front of me, I've got three big whiteboards in my office here. And I still almost every month, um, sometimes even more than once a month, I reevaluate what are the core things that I need to focus on in my business um, to, to really, and, and, and then I also, now that I've been doing this for so long, I look back, I look at historical data and I see what are the core things that have moved the needle the most, what will continue to move the needle and what are maybe some experiments that I can try out of new things to test, right? But I make sure for sure I'm focusing on the, the one slash core things, which is kind of expanded a little bit into more than just one thing now. Um, but it's because I've got good systems in for everything else. So kind of break down what what the things are that really move the needle in my business and that I believe will be real needle movers in your business, no matter what business you're in. If you're trying to go through and generate leads, which every business needs to generate leads, every business needs to make sales, our daily, we need to create short form content because short form content is absolutely crushing it right now. 
was blowing anything else out of the water. Um, and, and even in the last decade that I've been doing this, it's performing better than any other type of content that I've ever seen, right? Um, and so uh, a daily email, and I know that sounds crazy to some people, but we'll get to that here in a bit. Um, <laughs> daily, daily ads, which that one is for more of like the intermediate to advanced people. You don't have to do that because I said at the beginning, you don't have to have paid ads or anything like that. But a nice way to accelerate things is always obviously putting a little bit of money behind it. But once you have something that's proven and working, and then on a weekly basis, um, releasing a YouTube video or a valuable piece of content. Like some of you guys might be like, ah, oh, Jason, I don't want to be on camera ever. That, that sounds like the worst. Well, guess what? I think writing a blog post sounds like the worst. So some people would love writing blog posts. Some people love doing podcasts. Some people like choose your medium, whether it's a YouTube video, podcast, blog, whatever it is but something that you can add value to your audience and your ideal client avatar, whoever you're trying to market to. And then um, each week uh, doing a splinter promo, which I know no one knows what any of that stuff probably means, uh, but we'll be covering that in, I uh, can't remember, either tomorrow or the, the following day, right? Now, I've been talking about the last little bit, simplicity, right? Keeping it simple. And being consistent, and you got to be simple to be consistent, yet I'm now giving you three new things to do every day, two new things to do every week. <laughs> and how how do you get to a point where like, okay, well, Jason, like on top of everything I've, I've got, like you, you understand I've got a family, I've got life, I've got all these things going on. Um, how do I do this without having massive overwhelm um, like this dude over here on the right-hand side? So my goal is I want to show you exactly how to make this happen and how to simplify it and how it's actually a lot easier than you might think, right? Absolutely. So what we're going to be covering over the next three days, just real quick, day one, today, specific audience, nail down specific audience plus a rock salt offer. Uh, day two, it's going to be a lot of people's favorite day. Um, it's consistent lead flow, systems to automate, simplify lead generation without spending money on paid ads. What's been working extremely well. Then day three, proven follow-up systems to get consistent, predictable results for your business. I love that, right. Jason. I think it's important to set the agenda, right? And I know a ton of people are watching and they're like, well, let's get to the point. Jason's going to show me how to get to a thousand leads per day. Another person said, hey, he's going to show me how to sell a hairbrush to a bald guy like everybody's excited <laughs> and you know having a great time leading up to this but the important part of this entire workshop is really understanding the full context of where you're going to benefit uh, honestly and it's going to be the simple boring things that build business like 2021 uh last year or year before that one of the small activities i took on myself personally was agenda setting so before Within every hour, I wanted to set the agenda of what I will do that hour. And it's nothing crazy. I would just jump on my phone, get on the notepad, and just put down two or three line items of like, okay, this is what I'm going to achieve in the morning. This is what I'm going to achieve in the evening or afternoon. And that created such like efficiency in how I went about my day, how the teams around me went about their days, how other people created energy around it. And it sounds so simple, like, oh, you just add a few more items on your notepad. But the impact of, you know, another hundred people around you doing the same thing is huge. And your customers, your avatars, your partners, you know, your, anybody that you're working in, in the world of business will start seeing the energy of you being a new level, a new person uh, as you go into 2024. So day one, uh, Jason, help us understand specific audience and rock solid offers. Like, what does that mean? Let's unpack that. Yeah, well, let's dive into it, man. So um, I forgot this, I was ready. Let's dive in. Who's ready? Okay, <laughs> let's, let's, let's get it. Um, so number one, specific audience. And the best way to go through and kind of like, portray this of like identifying a specific audience is kind of telling you telling, telling you a history story a fun history story now it's not i mean it's history because it was basically when i was going back and i was starting my own um real estate crm company uh back in 2015 may 2015 we officially launched and the name was arsenal mkg terrible name um the, yeah you want to you want a simple name if you guys are going through starting a business 
Um, but we weren't we weren't focused on real estate. And you can see right here now, this is like a little mock-up of uh, after we got into the, the real estate space. But um, at the time, I was working, like I, we were we run a marketing agency, working with all the different types of clients. And um, basically I was, you know, we were using a, a landing page software, an email marketing software, a CRM software, all these different softwares. And so it was kind of like, you know, now it's very commonplace. And it's like what high levels mastered, but bringing all the softwares into one, right? And that was kind of our goal. And so I looked at, I looked at that. I'm like, man, well, if we're building on this, like no one else is doing this. Um, this will work for anyone. This will work for chiropractors. This will work for real estate agents, mortgage brokers, insurance agents, dentists. And so the beginning I was like, and I, and I hear this all the time. People wanted to go through and start their marketing agency, their SaaS business, um, software business with high level. They're like, I'm just going to go broad. I'm going to sell to everyone because I'm going to build the biggest, you know, software business, whatever, have all these big hopes and dreams. And that's kind of where I was at back in 2015. And the, the crazy thing is once you actually, you know, get your boots on the ground, start like doing the work, you start talking with people, you, you get a little bit of a reality check of what real life is actually like. Um, not what it's like inside your head, of all your hopes and dreams, but what it's really like. And so I remember I would go and I met, we had a, my, my parents had a neighbor who was a dentist. And so I went and met with him and was like, yeah, we're doing this. And he's like, mainly because of family friend, he was like, okay, cool. Like, well, let's, let's do it. And then um, he's like, but what other, what other dentists have you guys worked with? And I was like, oh man, like, well, we haven't worked with dentists, but like, this is what we've done for like this other industry. And he's like, I will, Go, go like do it with the dentist and then let me know how that went, right? And so I was like, okay. And then I, I knew another guy who was my chiropractor. I went and met with the chiropractor. And so like, you know, we had a relationship and I was like, this should be an easy sale, all that. And so I'm like, yeah, look, this is how we go through and generate leads. And he's like, okay, well, what other chiropractors have you done it for? I was like, well, shoot, dude. Like, I mean, we like, this is how it would work. And uh, like, I, so I would always tell other industries, but People wanted to hear stories and results, case studies of people just like them, right? Yeah. And you know, every every business considers themselves to be unique. So yeah. regardless if the solution is the same and it applies to everybody, they want to know what you're bringing to the table that's unique because they perceive themselves and their business as unique. And even if there's another dry cleaner down the street doing the same thing. <laughs> exactly. So yeah, they, they're all they're all these unique snowflakes. They're important. They're special, which, you know, as a salesperson going through and, and, and telling them about your business, you have to treat them that way. Right. And so I, I bang my head way too long. I, I'm a very slow learner, guys. I'm sure a lot of you guys are a lot smarter than me. Um, I, it probably like a year bang my head against my, the wall, trying to trying to just like, no, this is going to work. I'm going to make it happen. I'm going to work harder than the next guy, all that stuff. And then finally, my wife, I remember she was like, why don't you just like sell to real estate agents. Like I, I feel like real estate, it, it seems like it would really work well for them. And you've had some success with real estate agents. Why don't you just focus on real estate? And I was like, all right, what, you know, trying like trying to be all well, like. Wives are usually right. You know, they, they usually are much smarter, <laughs> much smarter. And so they are, I was like, okay, whatever. I'll give it a shot. Um, we'll see if this works. And at the time, was like I was doing every time thing at the time, guys, to, to get sales. I was meeting with people in person. I was trying to do webinars, and at the time, I was doing webinars. And at the end of the webinar, I was it was it was broad to any type of business owner, right? And I was selling our software for three hundred bucks for a year, a year subscription. In other oh words, gosh, annual plans, an annual plan for three hundred bucks. Basically, I was <laughs> I was making no money, right? And, and even when I would do these, these weekly, I was doing these weekly webinars and honestly, out of four webinars in a month, I would have maybe one, if not two sales max. And, yeah. and it was just cause I was just so broad. And then finally I was like, okay, I'm only going to work with realtors. I rewrote my entire messaging on my webinar, rewrote the whole angle, everything specific to real estate. And I was like, you know what? I'm just going to, I'm just going to jack up the price like this. Like if this is, if I'm going to go all in with this, I'm going all in. So I went from 300 bucks to a thousand dollars for an annual subscription. And lo and behold, the very first webinar that I did had the same amount of people that I normally have on, which was not a lot, maybe a, you know, a couple dozen, but I had four sales, four wow. people paying me a thousand bucks. And at that point, guys, I felt like 
one of the richest men in the world. <laughs> I know it's not a lot of money, but I was like, this, this is working. I can actually make this happen. And so the cool thing was we already had some results from the previous real estate agents. And then I got another four people basically saying, yes, I want you to help me. And I worked at that time. It was just me and one developer. And so I was doing, he was doing all the coding. I was doing literally everything else. And so I worked one-on-one -on -one, getting them set up, made sure they got solid results. And then each one of those case studies, I was able, like, I was able to get them results and then leverage those for four new case studies that now I can then go use on the next webinar. And the more people I talk to, the more sales I got, the more case studies, the more testimonials I got. Right. And so Basically, long story short, the big game changer here was identifying a specific audience, but not only a specific audience of real estate, but uh, uh, because in real estate, you've got commercial, you got residential, you got real estate investors, real estate brokers, real estate teams. I was focusing on the solo residential real estate agent, right? Someone's working them by themselves. Uh, maybe they're part of a team, but you know, so I got very specific and that is when we're able to go through, take those first four sales, and then over the next six years, get over 15,000 paying real estate clients onto our software. And um, just, I'll, I'll, I promise I'll be quicker with this one, but I I, I had learned the store, I learned the, 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 the whole topic of having a specific audience and not going broad, but going niche. And then I learned it to another degree two years ago when I started promoting high level. Uh, because I, I got in a high level and I'm like, perfect. This I already know my market. I already know my audience. It's people looking to start a marketing agency, right? Because it's, you know, that's kind of the core. And since it's kind of branched out a little bit. And I was like, but this is great because I can work with people because it's the same concept. I can work with people wanting to start a real estate agency or a dental agency or orthodontic or whatever, because it's literally the same process. It's just, you know, how you're fulfilling to the person or speaking to them is a little bit different. And so I went through did wrote out a webinar and it was, it was broad how to start an agency. And this is a kind of fall of 2021. And over the next three months, I, I promoted that, got some sales and 90, 95% of the people that were buying on that webinar, they wanted to start an agency, but they wanted to start a real estate marketing agency. And they're like, Jason, we want to do exactly what you did. Exactly. We just want to clone like everything that you did because we know you were successful. We wanted to do exactly that. And so I was like, okay, cool. Like I'll, uh, you know, I'll put together some trainings and templates, all that stuff, show you guys exactly what I did. So I did that. And they're all like, oh man, this is so awesome that we're so grateful that you went through and did this. Can't believe you literally gave us like your entire business. And then like it came to my mind. I was like, you know, should I, should I rewrite my webinar? to be specific to being a real estate marketing agency. And I just kind of had the back and forth in my mind. I was like, no, that's too, that's too niche. It's too narrow. I want broad. I want the mass. I want scale, right? I want to grow this thing like crazy. And um, I just kind of went back and forth. And then it kind of got to a point. I was like, you know, I've, I've got some extra time. Like I'll just go through and rewrite this, kind of make it specific to real estate, real building real estate agency. I've already got the course built. I've already kind of doing all that stuff. So might as well just go through and do it. So I went through and did it. And has anyone ever wrote a webinar or done like a, a live presentation? I'm sure a lot of people have not done that. And it's, it, it's totally cool. But typically the way webinars work, if you're doing a sales webinar, you do version one you go release it to everyone and you go and you try to sell all that you think you made it so awesome. And it typically flops. It's usually like pretty bad. It's usually like the first version is to learn a little bit more about your audience and how to improve it and make it better. And usually very version two, it's usually not to like version 10 or more that you're actually like starting to click and connect. And the craziest thing, this has never happened to me, never in the past and probably never will in the future my version one of my real estate agency webinar absolutely crushed it. Like, I mean, I have never seen a webinar convert like that had converted. And yes, it was a new offer to an, uh, my same existing audience, which you could be like, yeah, well, that's why I ran that thing for over a year. And that thing just crushed, 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 crushed. And the reason why is because I wasn't only niche with a specific audience but I went micro niche, right? Like I went, I went very, very specific. And although I wasn't crazy broad, man, I can tell you that was the most profitable webinar that I have ever run. 
And like, I've, I barely had to spend even that much money to bring people in because it was just converting that well. So basically now I've just kind of told you two real life experiences of like wanting to go broad, kind of being a little bit greedy, trying to go after the vein, like mass numbers. But what really worked was getting focus and specific. So um, how do you go deep with your audience? Whatever audience you choose, how do you go deep? You want to understand their pains. You want to understand their goals. So now we're looking at both polarizing ends of the spectrum, right? You got the negative and you got the positive. What, what's kind of like the worst, the, the pains, the worries, the struggles, or the goals and the successes on this end, right? Understanding both, how, like what makes them tick. And um, kind of going back to my story, I just told you about, you know, selling, uh, teaching people how to start a real estate marketing agency. If you are the ideal client, if you have art, like if I was a real estate agent, I know for a fact, I would have had way better conversions because I would be telling and speaking from experience. It works either way. Obviously, I went through and still made it work. Um, but going through and then being like selling, like how to start a real estate marketing agency and having already done that so much easier. Right. And then you want to read books about how to become a better orthodontist, chiropractor, real estate agent, whatever it is you're selling to. So like the, the books, the one thing, the millionaire real estate agent shift. I remember I would, I would read these. I would listen to the audio books, all that stuff just to learn because I was not the ideal client avatar, but I wanted to understand them better. And there's many times I considered getting my real estate license because it's not that hard to do. It's not like becoming a, a dentist or orthodontist um, just to understand my customer better. I didn't end up doing that, but just kind of like going along with that concept. And then if you so have, what, oh, go for it. Sorry. Question. So um, I, I'm kind of curious on how many of you have decided in an industry or an audience or even a market of some kind. Can you type down in the chat? What, what are you thinking? What are you considering? Maybe you're thinking about real estate as well. Maybe it's chiropractors. Maybe it's uh, automotive uh, companies like maybe it's vacation rentals like you know what are what are some industries that you're thinking about i'm seeing some of the chats here of uh, serial says insurance yeah real estate uh let's see marcus says real estate christy says in-home health care yeah so a couple of things that i wanted to share from what we have seen here at high level on jason's point of the power of narrowing down your focus so over the last, like, I think two years, we we launched um, the idea of SaaS mode where you can re, you know, package it, sell it to yourself, you know, for yourself, whatever. But going to market is not easy at all. It's very difficult because there's already competitors. There's also marketing agencies that you have to differentiate against in a sense. And uh, there's a lot of freelancers as well that have automations, right? So how do you differentiate yourself is quite the question when you figure out a way uh, to lane down or narrow down. So we have programs like the five day challenge. We have the Sassapreneur local hero playbook. We have the masterminds and we get the question of like, should I niche down? When do I niche down? How do I go about it? And here's a common theme that I've observed from now <laughs> 70,000 agencies. Okay. In the beginning of your launch, you don't have an offer as much as we can say it's going to be a rock solid offer. It's not as rock solid until the market tells you that it's rock solid. Just because you think it's great, it's not great just yet. So the market has to kind of confirm what your offer should be. So how do you do that? You have to kind of test out different industries. So like if I have a launch plan, uh, it's it's going to be drastically different than your scale plan. What I mean by a launch plan is What's going to get you to your first 25 to 50 accounts? That's your launch. After that is your scale plan. So that beginning, you may have to go after maybe the local market, maybe multiple industries, um, even in real estate. Let's say you go into real estate, you may have to deal with flippers, sellers, auctioneers, um, you know, developers, land people, residential, commercial. There's so many micro spaces in there that you have to multifamily. That's like a big thing now, right? So you have to kind of test these offers out in multiple lanes but in reality, to scale your business, you do have to find a narrow focus to be able to scale. Because what you don't want is an assembly line of custom jobs. You don't want that. You don't want a world of 
team members, workers, employees, and partners that are trying to fulfill different types of offers in the long run. You will never be able to scale. Um, so the question becomes, what should I do? Well, picking the audience, picking the niche is not rocket science. It's just a matter of choosing because somebody's making money in every industry. So therefore, no industry is bad. Somebody is making money in any industry. So that means the industry responds to an offer regardless. So what you have to do is figure out your testing ground and come up with a couple of lanes. And then as you kind of start scale, pick a lane like Jason says. Um, Jason, any thoughts on that as we kind of figure out how to go deep in your audience? Dude, I love that, man. Um, and I 100% agree. And uh, I think even, even when you're talking about an offer, and, and, and I used, I used to go through and when I would teach this stuff, I'd be like, you got to start with an offer. You got to start with an offer. That's number one. And then, um, I was like, you know what? The offer is irrelevant unless we have a clear, concise understanding of who our audience is. Right. Because even at that, like what you were saying, like, you know, you got to test out a lot of different, um, offers. Well, even at that, like you could have the same exact offer but just using different terminology of how to pitch it and sell it and the way you're speaking to that client avatar, one could completely like connect and the other one could completely misfire, right? Yeah. It could be literally the same end result, like the same, like you're doing the same thing on the back end, but unless you're able to use their terminology and lingo, right? Like you're when you're working with a dentist, it's gonna be more of like a, a patient, right? where it's like a real estate agent, they're looking to get like prospects and client. Like, you know, it's like you, you use different terminology and lingo. And so, yeah, fully understanding this um, is going to help you connect with them that much easier when you're going through and making that offer. Yeah, I think the key of what you said is when you did that first launch, you, you essentially went micro niche to the point where you knew their love language and you came from that industry in a sense of a previous run so like the lingo was just natural in, in how you presented the second third fourth fifth time you do a webinar you, everybody including myself we tend to stack or over um what's the word we organize too much it seems yep. it's too proper it's not as it's not as uh candid as you know uh, as it should be as the first run. Uh, but it, it's really cool seeing that. So how do you learn more about your audience uh, when it comes to, let's say you pick one? Yeah, great, great question. So what, what I like to do is um, kind of this last line here. So we've got like, you know, reading books on the topic, uh, but then go and like, see what other competitors are out there, not to copy them or model, right? Like some other people say, but just understand them better, right? Study their ads, sit on the webinars and take notes. Like, what are they What are they speaking to? What are they speaking about? Uh, read the sales copy, read emails, right? Just go in and and, and real estate is, uh, I, I only speak to real estate because like that's my background, right? But like real estate, the great thing is there's real estate coaches, there's real estate softwares, real estate agencies. So I've got a lot of different angles that I can go study a lot of like individual influencers or, a software company that you don't know who the face is, right? Um, and then one thing that you probably, if you guys have been through any of these um, audience trainings before, you've probably seen like, you have these long questionnaires, right? Like like what what keeps your client up at night and all this stuff. And I, uh, in the beginning, I always like, this is so bogus. Like, why am I doing this? This is just <laughs> waste of time, all that. And the more I get into this, the more I'm like, no, that is actually, that helps you craft everything. Your marketing message, you're writing your ads, your sales pages, your emails, everything. But um, the beauty about AI is, um, and I'll, I'll give you guys these here at the end here. Uh, but I've created like an AI client avatar prompts um, page where, you know, prompt one, help me create my ideal client avatar profile. I have a marketing software company. So you're telling chat GPT. The beauty thing about this is um, it's not to use as just a full on crutch, but if you're just getting started, the, the beautiful thing about it is chat GPT is scanning all of the internet, all of the data, all the content out there. And it can help kind of simplify the responses and answers. If you're like, I have no idea. But once you do this, the thing I would highly recommend 
is actually read what ChatGPT is spitting out because you could go through and do this exercise, copy and paste over in this Google Doc. But if you're not reading it and really internalizing it, it's really not helping you whatsoever, right? So um, I, you know, I have a market software company and I'm looking to help real estate agents with their lead generation or whatever it might be so they can uh, become a full-time real estate agent or whatever their end result is, right? Make six figures per year. Uh, let's give my ideal client a name, Joe. Um, uh, his name is Joe. Yeah, so his name is Joe. So what is Joe's annual income? And then what ChatGPT can do is go out and find the average annual income of a real estate agent or a dentist or an insurance agent or whatever the market is you're, you're going after. And then um, number three here, how, and I'm not going to go through all these, but how many individuals in the United States fit this profile? And this is absolutely crucial because this gives you what is called your TAM or total addressable market. So you can see, well, how many people can I actually even market to, right? In the United States, there's roughly 2 million residential real estate agents, right? So that is my TAM or total addressable market in the United States. So now I can know, okay, well, you know, that's a pretty decent amount of real estate agents. Whereas I have one friend who's been extremely successful um, in the agency space. He works with medical professionals and there is a maximum 10,000 in the entire world. And so your marketing is a lot different if you have 2 million and new residential real estate agents coming in every single day, taking the test and new ones leaving every day versus 10,000 total. And it takes a decade even to become that uh, profession. You, you treat things a little bit different, Right. Um, so anyway, this is this is kind of a little thing to to help identify and really nail down who your client avatar is. Um, yeah. So, in my uh, in my like kind of lessons learned from 2023, uh, my little journal, I I wrote this down: broad for show, niche for dough. Right? Because like. <laughs> Everyone wants to go broad. Like I literally taught everyone with like the big goals. I'm at the high level summit. Everyone says, I'm, oh, I'm broad. I don't even have a niche. I'm going to, and, and a lot of times what that tells me is like, I don't have a phone. I love you, but you don't know what you're doing, right? Like yeah. <laughs> you, you just don't, right? And, and it's fine, but it's just like, go go niche. And even that, that story of not even going for marketing agencies, but real estate marketing agencies, like that was micro niche. And, and that was what um, created so much um, profitability for my business. Right. Okay. So we good there, Paulson. Anything else you want to add on the audience before we dive into think, kind of part two? Yeah, I think we're good. I think I think the big key for everybody to remember there is a timing for it. Right. There's a timing of testing. There's a timing for deciding, and there's a timing for scaling. Which means in the beginning, you're testing, figure out what is the lane. So it's okay to have a beta test of maybe a couple of different things that you want to test out with offers and niches. But at some point. You need to make that decision of like, okay, I am going to be this person for this type of audience. And then eventually you're going to get to a world of um, you're going to, you're going to basically decide, Hey, I'm going to just be this type of provider for this type of audience forever, essentially, and build a brand around it. So there is a timing that you want to pay attention to. And that's really the key in making those decisions. So yeah, let's talk about uh, the rock solid offer. Right. Awesome. So step number two, we've got, we've got the specific audience. We're diving into the rock solid offer, which you kind of, you, you make the offer through a sales funnel, right? And so I like to keep things simple and here is my simple sales funnel. And this is what I've been using the last year plus to promote high level as an affiliate. And um, if you're on here looking at this and like, well, Jason, this is just some make money online crap that, you know, it's not going to work for my audience and my industry, all that. I get it. Believe me. Okay. We'll get to all that stuff. Um, the more important thing is the blueprint, the layout right here. Okay. Because the messaging, like we just were talking about, can all be tweaked. Everything can be changed. So how to make five to 10K per month using AI, some scammy clickbait crap, like just change that to, if you're doing real estate, how to generate two to five real estate leads per day. Right. And that was like literally one of my headlines for my landing pages. Right. But Basically what it is, um, and we're going to dive into this a little bit here. We've got a landing page. We got the confirmation page. So, and we'll talk about what a landing page is here in a second. Confirmation page is after they put in their contact info on this first page. We've got a lead, right? That's the most important thing. Confirmation page. Hey, you know, 
we just sent you the info via email, uh, but here's a video telling you how to do X, Y, Z, and then call to action where they go through and sign up, right? Um, let's see here. Okay, there we go. So why a landing page? I know we got a lot of beginners on here and some of you guys might be like rolling your eyes at me and like, Jason, we got it. We know what a landing page is and all that stuff. But this is something where I actually add this into my real estate webinar when it's talking to real estate agents because I thought I've been doing this marketing stuff for you know several years at the point. I was like, everyone knows what a landing page is. And I go to any other party, networking, like whatever, no one knows what a landing page is, right? And it's that's where it's like, we, we get so ingrained, like, we're in this little marketing community and we think that everyone knows these things where most people don't. So we got on the left-hand side, we got a website, right? That's high levels, main homepage or website. The right-hand side is a landing page, okay? So the if you look at the landing page on the right-hand side, it is clear, it's concise, it's simple. The whole goal of this is to convert website traffic into a lead, grab someone's contact information, right? The whole goal of a website, traditional website, and um, this is pretty much any any website, right? It's educational. It's informational. It's like we're going here. We're, we're a high-level user. We're going to go log into the app. We're going to go start a free trial. We're going to go you know, learn about what's the pricing. What does this software even do? We're kind of just exploring. We're in exploratory mode. And so because of that, a website, and this is not just, high level, like this is any industry, doesn't matter what it is, you're going to see roughly a 1% conversion rate of visitors to leads. So someone hits your page, um, 1%, right? One out of every 100 people. Whereas a landing page, you can get 25 to 30% of visitors converting into leads because of the structure of a landing page, right? So you don't spend a dollar more and you're able to get 25 to 30 times more leads, right? It's, it's kind of a no brainer. And that's why when I see people linking out to just like their main homepage, their website, whatever, I feel like it's, it's a missed opportunity because yeah, you're going to get that click, but in order to get them to come back, you're going to have to spend money on ads to retarget that person to come back. Whereas if we get the contact information, give them a little bit of a freebie in order to get them to send, come back. I hit send broadcast on an email and I just hit, you know, hundreds or thousands of people, um, get them to come back to my website, right? And so let's talk about the anatomy of a landing page, okay? And you look at this page, it's very simple. And that is one of the biggest things. Number one and number five on here are, are kind of the two most important things. And then the last little bit of mo mobile friendly. But number one is your headline, okay? So on here, I've got how to make 510K per month using AI. A great formula for a headline is how to get like basically insert get desired end result without the things that you hate or the things that you think are necessary but actually aren't so you look at this workshop it was how to get 100 to 200 organic leads per day for your agency which is how to get desired end result what you want the 100 200 leads per day organic you don't even spend money right now i said without um, needing a following, because that's one thing people, oh, well, you just, you only can do that because you've got a big following, this and that, right? Uh, well, without a following, we'll show you how to do that. And we'll give a lot more examples of that tomorrow. And I'll show you guys exactly how to do that. Um, and then also without spending tons of money on paid ads, something that people think is a barrier to get in. Oh, well, I don't have money to spend on paid ads or I don't know how to run a paid ad. So I'm not gonna, you know, so that's a very good formula right there. And then um, second, a call to action right? Get started here, download here, get free templates, get free case study, whatever it is. And then number three addresses the audience, which um, I'm going to look bad here because I'm, I'm contradicting myself on this page from what we just covered on specific audience. Normally you should say something like, you know, like if, if I'm going after real estate for real estate professionals, right? Something like that. I kind of go broad with this and I know I've already said that. I know it's like the top thing to remember, go, go niche. Um, but I say hundred percent beginner friendly and that's kind of addressing my audience of, of a mass market broad. And I, I do a lot of videos that are kind of like mass market broad, but then also a lot that are very much more niche and, and specific. So I've got, and, and this is just one of a, a lot of different landing pages that use this exact template, this exact um, format here. Okay. And Absolutely. then number four, Oh, sorry. Go for Paulson. No, no, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. So number four, what's offered, 
right? Like we, like I want to know, if, get started here. Well, what am I getting? So at the very top, I've got 100% free online course, right? It could be a PDF download, free case study, a uh, workshop, a uh, free training, what, whatever, like you need to let them know what is offered, keeping it simple. And then most like, honestly, I've said most importantly, a lot of times here, but most importantly down at the bottom is got to be mobile friendly because 90 plus percent of your traffic nowadays comes from mobile. We're all doing all of our like ninja work on our computers, on our laptops. And so if you don't click that mobile icon and you don't go adjust it, make sure that like all this stuff is above the fold where people don't have to scroll down to like see the headline, click the call to action button. Your conversions are going to go from that 25 to 30% down to that five to 10%, right? So kind of a quick structure and, and I'll give you guys like, um, we'll, we're going to throw this in as a bonus, like this exact sales funnel. So you'll be able to take this, you know, if you think the little brain explosion emoji is kind of spammy, then you just delete the, you just go tweak it however you want for your own business. Right. Um, now what information should you collect? Right. They go and they click, get started here. What are we collecting? Um, here's kind of the, the, the thought process of this. The less, the least amount of information that you collect, the higher your conversions are going to be. The more information you collect, the lower your conversions are going to be, but the higher the quality of the lead. All right. And so I used for, for a time there, I would only collect their email address because I was like, I am just, I focus solely on email marketing. I don't have a massive, uh, you know, I don't have a big sales team. It's just me. So I'm not going to be calling all these people. Um, and I wasn't, you know, I'm not going to mess around with like, there's too many texting laws for me. Like, I'm just like, I, I'm not doing that at scale. Right. But I kind of got to a point where I'm like, you know what, I'm going to get the name, I'm going to get the email address. I'm going to get the phone number. So I have good, solid information, but also, you know, the John Doe's at gmail.com or the F U at gmail. .com, like I get that all the time. Like those people are like, not even going to spend the energy to go type in a bogus email. Right. And I'm like, ah, I don't even want to fill this out. So they just won't even opt in. And then on top of that, cool thing about high level is you have like those little placeholders, like the name placeholders. So if like in a, if I'm sending an email, I can put in like Paulson in the subject line. So Paulson, are you coming? Like I sent that email, I think this morning or yesterday to my email list say, are you coming to the workshop? And so like when they see their fir first name, that's everyone's favorite word in any language that's ever been spoken, right? Is their own name. And so I like to grab that email address and phone number because I do like maybe one text follow-up, um, but that's kind of it. So then I kind of just like get the higher quality of information. But you, as, a, as you're going through and growing your business, you want to grab whatever information is necessary, right? And if you need like maybe a physical address, maybe wait till the next page, right? Like don't, like you want to go like for this page, let's get the name, email, and phone. So you have multiple ways of contact. You've got email, you, got, you can text them, you can call them on the phone, do voicemail drops all through high level. Um, but then also uh, you, you can get more, and then you have also kind of like higher volume of, of uh, conversion rate on your landing page, right? Um, now, next, you're going to the confirmation page, okay? And I, I have two on here, just mainly to show you guys that like, and we're going to get to this a lot more, um, I think on was that Thursday? Yeah. On day three, we're going to hit this a lot more, but, um, basically confirmation, like that you just put in your contact information. You want to confirm that they're in the right spot. And you look at this. We, I like to have congruency in my messaging on my sales funnel. So if I've got an ad or a social media post or an email of saying, Hey, how to make five, 10 K per month, or how to generate two to five real estate leads per day. That's what I'm throwing on this landing page, but then I'm also putting it at the very top on the confirmation page. And then also, which we'll get to here in a second, in the video, if you're doing a video, you should also be like, hey, today I'm gonna show you how to make five, 10K per month, you know, using AI or whatever. You want it to be consistent. So every step along the way, you're not having drop off because they know they're still in the right spot. Okay, I'm still good. I'm still learning what I wanna learn, right? And so, this is that confirmation page where it's it's kind of they put in their their info. You're going through delivering what was promised. I, I send it out via email, but then also kind of like go and show the blueprint um, in this video. But then you're also kind of like if someone's wanting to get, to move forward and get started, they're thinking, well, what's next? How do like if I don't if I don't have a call to action here, 
I'm actually doing them a disservice, right? Because they're like, whoa, that looks really cool. I actually, I want to do that. How do I do that? And there's no button like, you know, so that's where you like down here and you'll see, I've got two different options here. I got, you know, on this page, I'm doing more of the 30 day extended trial or this one's like a no trial, but like, it's, it's just a different, and we'll get into that on day three, like I said. Okay. So we've got this confirmation page, which once again, I'll get you guys all of the, these templates here that you guys can use. Um, and one thing you might be looking at this and be like, what, what do I offer? Right. Um, what do I offer to get them signed up as a software client or an agency client or whatever business that you're you're running? Well, if you're doing this whole SaaS mode, software as a service, right? Running a software business, you should probably include software, right? It's, it's pretty cool. This is an easy thing to do. And uh, it's there's a lot of value in software. Okay. So software, then on top of that, the great thing about high level is they have these things called snapshots which are templates, website templates, email te templates, text message templates that you can just go through and put into their software account. I already have pre-built, pre-done for them. Tons of value right there. And then these next two, I have know your audience because you could offer them a course, right? I do that a lot with my affiliate stuff on high level. I can offer coaching, but you look at it like a realtor, they will probably go through, they're more likely to go through a course than a dentist. There are, I can't even tell you how many real estate coaches out there in the world. Um, whereas like how many dental coaches do you know, right? Like a dentist is not, they're not looking online on TikTok for to find some coach on how to be a better dentist. They went through a decade worth of school, right? They, they know how to be a dentist. They're looking more for how to grow their business. So make sure you know your audience as you're going through and offering these different things. Done for you is, I would say, hands down, one of probably the best things you could possibly offer. People that are tech savvy, not tech savvy, everything, everyone wants something done for them, right? P humans are are lazy. I'm I'm pretty tech savvy, and even at that, I want things just done for me, right? I I want you to, I want Paulson to do everything for me, so I don't have to do it. Um, and so then uh, all everything that you're selling is going to be all focused around getting the desired end result. Okay. So like, even like with the, the real estate example, landing page says how to get two to five, real like hundred percent free training, free case, study, whatever it is, how to get two to five real estate leads per day or, you know, beginner real estate professionals, whatever you want to say there. And the next page, same thing, how to get two to five real estate leads per day. And so then in the video, you're still talking about how to get two to five real estate leads per day. It's all focused around that desired end result, what they want, right? And on top of that, and, and I feel like that's a big, a big thing where people misfire is they're like, oh man, this CRM is so cool or this like checkout workflows. And, you know, if you guys don't know what high level is, I just said CRM and workflows and you're probably like, what the heck are those, right? And that's, that's what your client is thinking as well. They're like, I don't, I don't care. I, like, I, I just don't care. So they want the desired end result. And then something that will always speak to anyone, no matter what business they're in, is simplicity. It's automation. It's saving them time and saving them money, right? Those are like four big things that you're you're probably going to hit it out of the park every single time if you offer those things. Yeah. And so- Jason, I want to I add a couple of things here. So yeah. those of you that are watching this workshop, yes, we are talking about how to bring in hundreds and hundreds of leads into your business per day. Now, for us to be able to field all of those traffic, all those inbound ID, you know, uh, flow, we have to have some pillars in place that helps you field that traffic. And that's really what Jason is diving deep into here is how to field the traffic before we talk about how to actually create the traffic, right? So understand the pillars that you need as a business. Like the worst thing that can happen to you as a business is if leads come in and you're not ready for it because you burn through those leads and I've done it. I mean, <laughs> trust me, we ran plenty of 10,000, 20,000, $30,000 campaigns without closers in place. And we assume that we ourselves as business owners could close those deals, right? Like there's no structure there. So uh, understand what we're teaching and showing you today is having those pillars. There are a couple of pillars, a couple of, you know, lighthouses, if that's the right word, 
to to be put in place to be able to feel the traffic that you can really go through. Jason, can you um go back to maybe like two slides? I want to make a couple of points here on those of you that yeah, right here. So I know there's a few of you that are a little bit more advanced than the beginners that are just starting out. And I want to just address the experts, the folks that have hundreds and hundreds of clients, and you're trying to figure out how to go to thousands. In the context of something like a landing page or an anatomy, let's talk about the marketing message for 2024. There's only two things that you can pick when it comes to the marketing style. One is inspirational and the other is disruptive, right? If you ask me as, as a newbie, like that's the lane I would pick. A perfect example of inspirational is someone like David Goggins, right? Oh yeah, motivation, motivation, motivation. I am a high performer. I'm gonna wake up every day, do ice baths, you know, military dives, like it's all inspirational. That's the canvas of marketing messaging. That's the painting utensils. That's the colors that he chooses. And everything aligned from that style is congruent across the board from his books, podcasts, funnels, landing pages. I mean, you look at anywhere in that brand uh, for someone like David Goggins, it's it's really congruent across the board. So you, as an advanced agency, as an advanced SaaS builder, or maybe even a business owner, one challenge I would have for you is pick a lane of the type of marketing message that you're going to have. So if that's the case, let's say you use inspiration, you want to align your headlines to be inspiring. Let's do the opposite. And I actually like the opposite, especially in saturated markets, because unsaturated markets, I feel like the inspirational style works a lot better versus a saturated market, let's say, for example, dentistry or real estate. Every It's beaten up, right? So in a beaten up space, what you want to do is something like disruptive. And I'll, I'll do a quick testing here just for fun. I don't have a, a one leeway or another. Name a presidential candidate that was disruptive. If, if I look at the comments, I promise you there's only one name that was so disruptive that we can all say his marketing style was so disruptive to the average, average style of presidential candidates. Now we're seeing new people adopt that style. That's a different thing. But look at that type of attack. Look at the type of messaging. So like if you're going to go after a saturated market, right, your headlines for you that are advanced, you need to pick the lane of having an opinion having disruptive, having, you know, controversial, because you're using these things as canvas, right? Like your, your headlines would be like, AI doesn't work. Here's what the real dentists are doing today. Like it needs to just be extremes. And if you choose those lanes, you'll see these pillars converting differently. And to Jason's point, like you might, you must have multiple, multiple pillars. It's not one landing page. An average business, like, like even Starbucks, for example, right? They sell the stupid pumpkin spice latte thing, November, December, January, and they pound that thing for millions of dollars, right? Uh, uh, like Planet Fitness, for example, if you did not watch any news channels, they they dominated advertising for January. Why? Because there's a timing. And they went after the avatar that fit the Planet, Planet Fitness membership style, if you really pay attention. So have a lane, and I just wanted to share that for those of you that are a bit more advanced, maybe you're not starting out, but picking the lane of marketing message is going to make a big difference in how you build out these lighthouses, these pillars, as you go into 2024. Jason, let's go into the next item that you wanted to talk about, which was the offers. Can you share a little bit more light in, in these offers? What do you mean by software, templates, courses? You know, like, let's unpack that in a little yeah, bit more. Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. Um, yeah, so basically... There, there's a lot of there's a lot of different angles you could sell the software. Like when I was I was telling you guys a story about like when I was selling my my real estate CRM, and initially I was selling an annual subscription for so an entire year's worth of the software, and then what we did is we're like, well, let's 
try to like, we, we want monthly recurring revenue. That's kind of like why you're in the software space, not like one-off sales. So we're like, let's cut in half and see how that converts to um, conversion rates. So we went from 12 months to six months. And crazy thing is, is the conversion rates stayed exactly the same. And so I was like, well, I want to just run a marketing test. Marketing is all a big science experiment. I was like, I want to cut that in half again. Went from six months to three months. Conversion rates stayed exactly the same. And then even now with high level, because I don't control um, how like the plans are and how it can offer, I had to adapt. And instead of offering three months, I have an extended 30-day free trial. So it's even a 30, like it's gone from 12 months to six months to three months to 30 days. And there's even times where um, I sell no trial, but hey, if you don't do a trial, we'll hook you up because if you're going to pay us money up front, we'll actually go through and set up your account for you, right? So kind of like that done for you aspect. So software is basically software usage. How how much access do you want people to have? And you know, with high level, you can have different features on different plans. Now you can say you can only have this many contacts or this many users, um, so it's just kind of, it's basically software usage. Then your templates are, you know, website templates, sales funnel templates, email templates, like what types of templates do you want to give out to people <clears throat> that's going to be beneficial for them? Um, and so those are kind of the main things. And then the courses and coaching, a course, obviously those are like digital videos that you can watch by yourself. Coaching is going to be more of like, uh, you know, jumping on Zoom, asking questions, kind of like that back and forth, getting real feedback in real time instead of just like watching a talking head. And those are going to be more based around like, how do you use the software and the templates to get that desired end result, right? And so like um, with my real estate CRM, we would have, it was basically how to go through and generate real estate leads was the kind of end goal, right? And so as a real estate agent, you have their buyer's agent, their seller's agent. So working with buy, people looking to buy a home, sell a home, <clears throat> and you know people running open houses, all these different things. And so in my courses and our coaching, we had our templates that was like, here's our buyer lead templates, our seller lead templates, our open house lead templates, um, all the different types of listing lead templates, and then the courses, the videos would show how to go through and set those up, how to leverage the templates, how to leverage the software. And then we would also have, you know, weekly coaching calls that they weren't, if something was like mishitting with the the templates and the, the videos, all that stuff, they could jump on, ask questions and make sure that that was getting resolved for them. Absolutely. And then there's uh, maybe two or three that I've seen in the recent days among high levelers that are kind of popping up is challenges uh they'll mm -hmm. do like a two three day challenge or a five day challenge for a certain avatar another yep. thing is sales as an offer so like if you look at you know the billy jean the joel kaplan style of building an agency it's like literally sales on a plate so hey can i send you two appointments or close to appointments if i close them can you handle it so those types of mediums and styles work in like very, very saturated markets where they're like, we don't want any more leads. We want actual closed deals, right? Yep, uh, yep. Another one is uh, content itself. There is a crowd that just simply absorbs content all day long. So podcasts, YouTube longs, and, and these are these are ways to engage them on a top of the funnel type of mechanism. You're not going to just convert people off of just a YouTube video, but you need to create the engagement, bring them into the fold of the umbrella. So eventually when you do lane them through the nurture sequences and workflows and experiences and offers you have, you eventually convert them um, over the long run. So how can you make a better offer than the competition? I think that's a great question here, uh, Jason. Yeah. So basically it's going out and, um, it's understanding the competition, understanding the different offers that are out there. Um, I, you know, I had to go through to do this. I remember when I started in the real estate CRM, decided to go in the real estate space. I had a lot of people like, and this is pre high level, pre everyone, you know, white labeling their software and going after real estate, you know, um, back then there was still tons of competition and people would tell me like, well, that seems kind of stupid. Like, why are you doing a real estate CRM? There's already so many real estate CRMs. Yeah. And, and I was, Williams gives you a $50 one on top of that. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and then a lot of brokerages just like, I just get one free with my brokerage, right? Like there, there's a lot, I heard that all the time. And so 
um, you got to know like what they're offering and what's out there, but then also know how to position it better <clears throat> than the next guy. And, and even I learned that again, get into the, the high level world as an affiliate, like, um, everyone knows that like, you know, you, you sign up with an affiliate, you get bonuses. And so people do affiliate shopping, like, Oh, well, what do you offer? Uh, versus this other person. I remember the first time I got that message, I was like, Whoa, this is, this is different. I was like, <laughs> I'm used to like having my own software, my own brand and all signups were created equal. It didn't even matter. I just, you create noise and signups were all attributed to me. Right. Whereas now I'm like, Oh wow. I got to like, I, in mm -hmm. order to like, yeah. they're, they're not, they're not just going to sign up with my link because I put my link in front of them. Right. And so it's, it's understanding, okay, what is the competition doing? What are they offering? How do you make it better? How do you make things faster, simpler, easier, um, you know, for, for that client than the next guy. And how do we speak more to their, their pains, their struggles, their hopes, their dreams, um, versus the next person. Right. Yeah. And there's no such thing as an evergreen offer. Actually, all offers are seasonal. Some of them last sometimes even up to two, three years, but it's still seasonal in the longevity of the business. Like, yep. You know, like McRib sandwiches and McDonald's, they go, they discontinue it until the, you know, stupid frappes come out. I don't know why I, I know a lot of these random offers out there, but <laughs> but it's, I observe them because they're seasonal. They they come in and out. And, and then for you as a business, you should have, let's say in 2024, all of you that are watching, let's like, here's what, what one of my challenges is for you. Test out at least five offers. Decide on two out of the five and cut three of them, right? So out of five offers you test out, even if it works, take the top two that are just unbelievably good. The three that did okay, or just because you made a little bit of money off of it, doesn't mean you keep it long-term, cut those out and refine it for the next year. So then going into the second year, you have two offers that are proven. Then you only have to come up with three new ones. By the time end of your second year run, you should have five total concrete, unbelievable rock solid offers that you can then scale very fast, very quickly in any market. Uh, but anyways, Jason, what else do we need to learn today outside of audience and offers? Yeah. So this is, I think, let me see. I think this, yeah, this is the last, last slide, um, which will hit kind of on the, just the video sales letter structure uh, before we wrap it up and we can do a little Q and A um, if yeah. people have questions here. But um, it is funny because when you were talking about going um, pick your lane of like and, and talking to like more seasoned marketers, um, this slide actually was coming to my mind because uh, as we're going through and doing this, so VSL stands for video sales letter. So it's basically like kind of going through and it's usually not that long, 10, 15 minutes, but kind of like a little bit of a sales pitch to get them to take action on the next thing, right? which by chance, this one says not a sales video. And um, Paulson was talking about like on your landing page or on different marketing things, like addressing your audience and going against the grain of what all of the other competitors do, right? And so um, this we'll get into the structure here of the, the video here in just a second. But one thing that I did that was against the grain of what all the people do in this video and why I said not a sales video is because if you're on this call right now and you've probably clicked on an ad because you're like, mm, that's interesting, click on it, opt in, go see their VSL. And what are they What are they pitching? They're pitching for you to book a, strat a free strategy session with a member of their team, a consultant, right? Which is basically a, a sales yeah, call in awesome. disguise, right? That, that's all it is. And, and the truth is like, I know that I've been this game long enough. I, you know, know most of the top players and all that. And so I'm like, and, and I know, and I talk with enough people that I'm like, I know what rubs people the wrong way. So like at the very beginning of this video, so if you look at the structure, once again, I'm going, you know, how to get desired end result. Real estate is like how to get two to five real estate leads per day. Or like what Paulson was saying, um, you're, there's different points that you can sell to like um, leads. If leads is not the game changer, it's like booked appointments how to get two to five booked appointments a day or what or whatever the number is that you feel like you can confidently deliver. Um, just so you like, they're what they click on it. Hey, you know, today I'm going to show you how to get whatever the desired end result is, how to make five, 10K per month using AI. Um, so they're like, okay, I'm in the right spot. 
But then before I even get into results and proof on this one, because I know my audience really well, I say, and real quick, guys, this is not a sales video. I'm not going to sell you anything. I'm not even going to have you book an appointment with a sales rep for a free strategy call, uh, which we all know is just a sales call. And to say, guys, you go sell you a five to $10,000 coaching program. We all get it. We know how that goes. And then I go back into it. So like, I kind of like take my foot off the gas there a little bit, not only address, let them know that they're in the right spot. But everything that this typical that they always see and it's, you know, I've always get this. I'm I'm like addressing that and just like knocking away those those like beliefs of like, oh, this is just another another scammy guru just going to like get me on a call, send me on ten, some 10K coaching program. And the truth, I mean, I can do that because I'm not doing that, right? So I can confidently say that. So so if you are, you know, more of an advanced marketer, you want to like really know your, not even advanced, just intermediate, like you know your audience well, and you know what a lot of other people do, you can, you know, what do they call it? Like throw rocks at the enemy, right? Like you can have like that, that same, that common enemy, which um, draws them in closer to you. And so from there, what I like to do, and this is just, um, th this is not like a, I don't think you'll ever, you'll see this like VSL structure anywhere. This is just something that like, I've kind of put together based on doing a lot of YouTube videos and seeing where people engage and what they interact with. And so usually like, you know, if, if the title of my YouTube video is how to get, you know, two to five leads per day, I'm going to start out here, you know, I'm going to show you how to get two to five leads per day. And then the back of everyone's head is like, prove it, right? Like, or you, you don't really make that much money or you don't really do this or that. So then showing results, whether it's your own, if you are that also that ideal client avatar or to show others, right? Like, you know, here's how we got, you know, Joe and Sam and Sally and um, Jane, all these people all, you know, so I usually like to show like three or four results and just quick, but just like to knock away those, uh, those doubters. And, and you're, you're always going to have haters, right? You're always going to have people like, Oh yeah. Right. Like even on this workshop, someone that was like 100, 200 leads per day, Someone's like, that's pretty unbelievable. If you, unless you're spending like millions of dollars on paid ads, I'm like, well, it's, it's, it's actually true. I've got, uh, we'll talk about that tomorrow. Um, so that's where you kind of like knock away those, um, those false beliefs. And so how to get whatever desired result, show proof. And then um, before you even get into the content, I'm going to show you how to duplicate this plus give you insert your bonuses. Um, I'm going to give you the automation software plus the templates and a free course when you click down below and get a free trial or go ahead and get started and we'll set you up with the, you know, your account. So like what it's like, you kind of like seed the offer right there at the very beginning, the first like 30 seconds. And then you get into the content of actually showing them how to get the two to five leads per day or whatever it is. Right. And the key thing here going back to the kiss of keeping it simple, you, you really got, you got to dumb this down so much. Like no one wants to see a demo of your software. No one wants to see anything besides like you What's want to, them? you want, yeah, you want to just show like, okay, like make it believe, like there's a book called make them believe. Um, I've never read it. I've read the title and I thought that was enough. Like you just want to make them believe. Right. So it's like, make them believe that they can do it and that it can be possible for them as well. Okay. Don't get in like, here's how you create a workflow. You click add email and like no, nobody wants to see that, right? And so that part should be, you know, just a few minutes, just showing as simple as possible and then closing it out. So, you know, if you want to get two to five real estate leads per day and get my, all my templates that I just showed you in the content section, plus this automation software, plus the course of showing you how to do it step-by-step -step, plus coaching, then get started with free trial or sign up for the software, you know, whatever the uh, call to action is. All right. So um, anyway, that was the the quick recap, specific audience, specific offer and a uh, simple sales funnel. And uh, yeah, we can get into, I like it. So let's get do, into questions. Let, yeah, we can do a Q and a here. So <clears> we're <throat> at 144. We'll spend about the next 15, 20 minutes doing Q and a, so those of you that have questions around 
what we talked about today. So I, I don't want to take questions on items that we're going to cover tomorrow, which is building the traffic and how to really, you know, um, create that noise. But today we talked about how to feel the traffic, which is the first step of building the business of being able to handle that kind of amount of leads. Uh, so uh, as you have questions, I'm going to go through the comments here. Uh, let's go ahead and go through and start asking questions in there. A um, couple of things that are just coming to my mind, uh, Jason, in the grand scheme of things, how many of these, um, and this is personal questions from me to you, like how many of these systems do you have as a business? Like, do you have like, you know, 10 landing pages that are doing 10 lead magnets that are trafficking xyz amount of things or how do you determine if one is successful or not uh let's let's go through those two items real quick yeah so i have um two landing pages and oh okay granted i have two landing pages one goes to a webinar an automated webinar selling a one thousand dollar program um the other one is this uh, which webinars are a whole, like the, that's a whole beast in themselves. So that's more of like, once you get advanced, you can dive into that. Don't, don't even try to do it. If you're the beginner, it's not, not what I would recommend. Um, but the, the land, the landing page I showed you that simple sales funnel, that's honestly the, uh, that's the landing page I use all of 2023. And sometimes I would tweak the, um, tweak the copy. And so like that one was that one, I think I did like Q4 of 2023, mainly just Q4. It's like how to make five, 10 K per month using AI. Cause AI is, you know, hot and big and everyone's clicking on AI stuff. Um, and before that it was a lot of, you know, how to start a software company. I tested that one for a little bit and, and that was, that one was fine. It just, um, a little bit more complex. Like a beginner is probably gonna be like oh, a software company, like just overwhelmed from the beginning. Right. And then another one that I tested was more of like the, you know, how to start a five to 10 K per month marketing agency, just more of like direct, like marketing agency. Cause you look on, um, Google traffic, a lot of people type it in each month, how to start a marketing agency or social media marketing agency or digital marketing agency, or how to start SMMA. Like there's a lot of people already searching for that. Um, and so anyway, so as far as, as far as that goes, I, I would just have that one simple landing page, you know, maybe three different, um, I, I like to make sure I've got quite a bit of data before I tweak or test anything. And sometimes I, there's no reason to tweak or test it. And I just kind of do, um, but then in day three, I'll be talking about more of like the follow-ups of like the different angles there. And okay. on those I've got, I mean, five to 10, I would say different angles, they're all the same offer with different hooks and different angles. So yeah. we'll, um, which we'll, 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 we'll get into that. And, we'll get into and, that. Yeah, we'll get into that Thursday. <laughs> That's the good stuff. <laughs> so, okay. So let me go through uh, questions here. Those of you that have questions, please put them down. Uh, let me go ahead and change my view here to top comments. Wait. Is it top comments? No, most recent. Okay, cool. Um, okay. Uh, will you show us how to build the traffic that comes into the landing page? Well, that's what we're going to do over the next two days. Today was just building. Yeah, that's list. that's tomorrow. I, yeah. I kind of did it out of order. Like traffic is, you know, you need traffic to send a landing page and then to follow up. Yeah. But I kind of did day one first because like, you need some place to send the traffic. And so that was kind of like what I kind of nailed down today. Yeah. And then someone's asking, uh, when do we get the free goodies from Jason on this workshop? So actually, just to clarify that point, let me go ahead and share my screen for a quick second here. Jason, oh, yeah. I'm going to just share my slide here. Hopefully y'all can see this. So as part of this workshop, if you, if you don't have high level, um, and you can jump into Jason's offer. It's gohighlevel.com slash Jason dash wardrobe dash offer. Um, you'll be able to grab all the goodies that we're providing, which is all snapshots Jason has, uh, a ton of courses. Can you explain a little bit more of what is all included as the bonuses? I know we didn't really talk about it today. Yeah, let me let me hit that really quick. Um 
Sorry, let me just pull up that slide here. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, I'm sorry, guys. Getting back to share screen. Go for it. Yep. All right, so this is kind of the day one giveaway, and, and each each day I've kind of got some more cool stuff for you guys um, stacking on top of it. But, but yeah, so that's the link right there. Um, we can maybe paste it in the chat so it's easier to click on. Um, but that's the sales funnel template clone. You guys will get that. Um, my brand new AI SaaS agency course, I'm actually starting to sell that one for two. This is like brand new. I'm just launching um, January right now. Um, so that'll have the AI avatar doc plus training. So you guys will get everything that we're, we're covering um, on this three-day workshop, plus diving in a little bit deeper on certain things of like how to actually set a lot of the stuff up since we can't cover that all in just this uh, limited time we've got. Um, I'm also going to hook you guys up with uh, my real estate agency accelerator course. So that's that program I was kind of telling you guys about that I just kind of led with how to start a real estate marketing agency. It's literally the blueprint of how I got all my clients, how I fulfill for clients, like everything A to Z, right? And Paulson talked about challenges, got challenges in there, my challenge funnels, all that good stuff. Um, and then I've got my affiliate cash flow academy course, which I I sold for about 60 days, beginning of 2023. And then I shut that down and stopped selling it. Um, but that is literally that's like my exact affiliate blueprint. Um, we've had a lot of, I think we've had six or seven people now go through that and hit the top 10 leaderboard. Um, so there's, there's been some good, good success stories from yeah. that. So yeah, th yeah, those are kind of the core bonuses from day one. And, and, and guys and gals, if you, um, the, the common question is, well, Paulson, I'm, if I'm already on a high level plan or I'm an existing user, can I get access to some of these bonuses? Yes, you can. We'll tell you how to do that as long as you come live for day one, two, three. On day three, we'll give you a direct link that'll give you access to some of these things where you would have to log in through your own login. So that way you, you do go through high level uh, and show proof that you have a high level account but either way you will get it um just be patient with us to day three as me and jason are kind of building some of those things out for those that are already existing but if you are brand new and don't have a high level account i promise you this is a very very strong 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 bonus and offer that you get from a you know a proven affiliate if you ask me um so let's go through some some of the more of the questions um Let's see. Uh, let's see. I'm going through these questions and seeing what's relevant to today's. Um, but, well, what is what is a realistic expectation for client acquisition? As if we're a beginner when it comes to implementing some of these strategies, Miguel Miguel de Souza asked that question. So let's see if we can answer that. Yeah, Miguel, for sure, man. Um, so here, here's the deal. Um, sales is a numbers game, right? So if, if you want clients, it, it all comes down to client outreach. Yes. You'll get sometimes people where they're like, they'll, they'll sign up and they'll have a best friend or buddy or something like that. That's already like primed, ready. They're looking for a solution and they can talk to one person and sign up that person. Right. It's not the case with everyone. And so, there's, um, and, and like I said at the beginning on, on the slide, I, like this is just one way to go through and get leads. And this is kind of more of like an at scale inside my trainings. I've got um, dozen plus ways that I've gone through and gotten clients organically um, as a beginner that are, are ways that they're not necessarily at scale, but they're proven ways that you can go through and get clients. And it, it's all going to come down to your output. Like I, um, I'm a huge stats nerd. I almost majored in stats in college. And there is a term in statistics called the law of large numbers. And basically the law of large numbers is the, the greater the sample size or the more people, the more volume you have, the closer you're getting to the mean or the average of what the real number is, right? So um, to kind of like simplify that, basically the more people you talk to, the more you're going to know, okay, it takes me, I have to talk to, 50 people to get one client, right? Or a hundred people to get one client. So the more people you talk to, 
the biggest mistake I see newbies make is they'll go through um, a training of mine or someone else's, whoever it is. They'll talk to 10 to 15 people and they'll be like, ah, nobody wants this. This, this doesn't work. And this, and I'm like, you talk to 10 to 15 people, right? Like, I'm sorry, but like, I, you, you got, you got to talk know. to more people yeah. than, than 10 to 15. And, and there are, like I said, there are people that talk to 10 to 15 and they sign up one or two clients, but usually it's because maybe like they are that ideal client avatar and they've got a bunch of friends that are just like them. And they're like, they, they know they, they know how to talk to them. They know the solution. They know what they need. They know what pain points. Whereas if you don't know any of that, you might have to talk to a little bit more people, which is totally fine. But, um, I would say th this is one thing I, I share with, with, um, people on my coaching call. And then, and I'll, honestly, I, I asked at the end of this past year, you know, what was kind of a big takeaway you guys took away from, um, you know, being in this program, coach calls on a high level. And someone was like, you know what, the, my biggest takeaway that you've, you've ever said was to expand your time horizon of what it's going to take to be successful. So many clickbait things are make money in 30 days, get six pack abs in 30 days, do this in 30 days, which you get to the end of the 30 days. If you don't have the six pack abs, if you don't got a million dollars in your bank account, you're like, this didn't work. It's a scam and you quit right? Whereas what if you expanded your time horizon to not 30 days, but you said, I'm going to give this an honest try for 12 months. Uh, we're sitting January, 2024. And I'm just, I'm going to, I'm going to be consistent. I'm going to, I'm going to do like a simple, consistent blueprint, like that I can do every single day, every single week with everything else I got going on in my life, but I'm going to stay consistent with it till the end of this year. And I guarantee, like, I, can, I guess I can't guarantee you because you actually put, got to put in the work. But like, you'll be amazed at what the outcome can be. And I remember that's how when I started with YouTube, it was January 2018. And I thought, you know what? Like, if I give this 30, 60 days, I'll, I'll probably be depressed with my results. But I was like, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna be consistent for an entire year, January to December 2018. I was like, if at the end of the year, it it's led to nothing, then so be it. And I just, you know, I, I learned something. But um, at the end of 2018, I was like, wow. That's great. I, and I didn't have like tens of thousands of followers. I think I had maybe maybe 10,000 subscribers at the end of the first year. But I was like, whoa, that's that's kind of cool. That's something to build upon. That's something to like to keep doing. And now, uh, you know, six years later, um, almost to the day of like starting my YouTube channel and uh, 200,000 subscribers has been one of the biggest game changers. So that's the thing. I would just say expand your time horizon of what you think is possible. Not saying that it can't be done in a shorter amount of time or anything like that. We just have a longer term commitment to making this happen if it's something you seriously want to make happen. I love that. Um, Raul West Vasquez is asking, how much time do you spend on Legion versus client acquisition versus like service and support when it comes to SaaS and agency? Yeah, so I do. Now I do zero support. I have two VAs that, that do all support and all like, you know, um, I have someone that does client setup. I do all that stuff. Um, in the beginning, I mean, it, it. if you're brand new and you're starting out, you have zero clients or any of that stuff. There is no support. There is no client setup. Like, it, so it 100% of your time is lead generation and client acquisition, right? It's all sales. And then it gets to a point where finally you get your first client and you want to make sure that they're having a good experience. So then now you focus your time to getting them set up, making sure they're all, all good to go. And that's the beauty of high level is it simplifies the setup and getting things put together. And then you're using software tools and systems to make it a lot easier and streamline the setup. And then as soon as they're set up, you're hundred percent back focused to uh, sales. And then your first hire, in my opinion, should be an account rep or a support rep so that you can focus all your time on lead generation, marketing, sales. And then as soon as that person comes in, you're just passing it off to somebody on your team to be able to like go through and do all of the setup, right? I don't know if that answered the exact question. Yeah. But. yeah. So I think there's a follow-up question. I think, you know, I think it's relevant. So how much business are you doing with your, your SaaS versus affiliate? Uh, because like Tom, Tom Pacheco is asking like, what is the, you know, he, he, he said, are you essentially focused on the affiliate side more or the SaaS side, I guess? Tom, what up, man? Um, I am a hundred percent focused on the affiliate. I don't do, I don't do the white labeled SaaS anymore. 
uh, or not anymore. I, I be it's quite honest, I never did. I had my own custom software development. Um, and so I, I toyed around with looking at doing that, uh, the white labeled SAS, but I just like, I, I don't know. I, I, I'm a big believer in focus and focusing on one thing. And I've considered at times in the past, like, Oh, I'll just do my own white label SAS and just, you know, have that my focus. Um, but I've, I've, I, I enjoy, I enjoy the audience I serve and I, I speak to. And I believe that, and, and I know some people like that are like the so-called gurus or whatever, they've done their own white label SaaS or not doing the affiliate thing. And they're like signing people up, which I, I know I could do that, but I don't feel like it serves my audience to the best of the ability. Like my audience are people wanting to start an agency. So if I serve my own white label SaaS and collected a hundred percent of the, the you know money coming in great for a little bit. But then as soon as they go to sign up a new client, they like my white label SaaS is not work use, useful for them anymore. Like they have to go get a high level account, right? So that's why I'm like, you know what? Let's just right from the get go, just get a high level account because what I teach, what I do, everything like that, it's going to be a better, um, it's going to be better for you to just to go straight to high level than come to me and then switch everything over to high level, you know, all that stuff. So. Yeah. And I'm a big proponent of that too. Like uh, I've seen a lot of power SaaSpreneurs who want to have nothing to do with the affiliate side. <laughs> and I, I just like Jason, there's a ton of affiliate power players that don't want to have anything to do with the SaaS side. Here's what I recommend. Pick a lane and go all in. And there's no point in being one or the other or kind of somewhere in between. I think the better thing to do is go all in on one side and just go all out and just be committed on one side. Cause you can make money on either way. There's pros and cons to both, right? The, I mean, uh, 100%. Affiliate side, you, uh, the affiliate side, you lose 60% of potential revenue right out of the gate, but there's nothing you can do to get that 60% essentially. Um, but we handle uh, as the parent company, all the onboarding, all the, nuances of managing and maintaining the customer for life right so there's that component that you don't have to deal with where on SaaS you do deal with that but you keep 100 percent of the revenue yep. then when they turn out it's on you as well so it's like it's a double-edged sword and there is money to be made on both sides if you ask me <laughs> and, yeah and, and real quick just to address what i know what everyone always thinks what everyone always says and comments on that um, they're like, well, yeah, like it would be so much better to do like the affiliate route because you don't have to really like it's it's way easier because high level takes care of all the support at scale. To be honest, I think that um, like getting support and account reps for your first maybe 10 to 20 users. Yeah, it's like, OK, hiring a new person like that's a decent amount of money. But then you like the way the SaaS business works, you can have one person and be able to service hundred plus people. Right. Um, yeah. and so at scale, actually it's not that much of a, you know, to, to keep a hundred percent of the commissions and I'm not, I'm not promoting either way. Cause like, obviously there's huge pros and, and maybe minor cons to each one. But, um, at, at, once you get to any scale, you hire like a few support reps and you're good, you know, like it's, it's not that costly, um, to go through and replicate like a, a very good um, support system for chats, emails, even doing one-on-one -on -one setups, like all that. So it's it's not that difficult. Love that. Uh, Jesse Knotts is asking, how relevant are AI tools for content creation for you today, like in general? It's a great question, Jesse. And what's up, Jesse? I, I know you from the group. Um so I, I've done, I've tested a lot, and actually tomorrow I'm going to show you guys a lot of AI stuff. Um, and I'm and I'm kind of in the I'm I'm in a spot where I'm like, yeah, I mean it's it's really cool. But at the same time, and I'll show you guys the cool stuff tomorrow. But at the same time, um, you, you got to be aware of what the market is saying, right? And I like I'll get I'll get comments like I've done I don't know if you guys follow me, but like in the last month or two, like I've done 100 percent purely AI generated stuff. I have been I've been involved in the content creation zero. My my uh, VAs have done 100% of the scripting, making the videos, editing the videos, uploading the videos. And like, I've been completely checked out on all that stuff. So that sounds cool. Stick around for tomorrow and I'll show you guys exactly how to make that happen. 
with that said, you do get comments of people and like, oh man, this is the, the lazy man's way of creating content or like, you know, oh, this is just like AI generated, even though it's like, it's pretty good. Like the first video I showed my <laughs> wife yeah. and I was like, ah, is this, I was like, does this look scammy? And I like showed it to her and she's like, why would that look scammy? Like it took her like five seconds before she realized that it was like AI generated. And I've even had other friends in the space when they saw the first, they're like, whoa, dude, that like, that looks pretty real, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, so I'm kind of in a spot where I'm, te- I'm always testing and I'm kind of like I'm testing a little bit of the AI, but I might even go back to like, cause the, like, especially short form, it doesn't take that long to actually go through and shoot it if you have the scripts. So I'll, I'll be, I'll continue testing that. But, uh, but yeah, there are some AI tools and we'll talk about it tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, I get this question a lot, but maybe, um, I would love to just kind of hear your perspective on this. Um, Lisa Kanasi or Kanasa is asking, how can one find out what is the difference between the three levels of high-level plans, the starter, unlimited, and pro? Like, how do you differentiate the plans in general when people ask you that? Yeah, um, it kind of kind of depends on what your goals are with it, right? Um, I think if you're just starting out brand new, the $97 a month plan, I don't think there is anything that gives you that much value for that price in the market. Like, yeah, I, I, I like, I would argue with, I mean, unless someone showed me, I would argue that all day, every day. Right. Cause basically you can have, um, and as far as the terminology goes, you create your account and you have three sub accounts, which a sub account is basically one account where you run your entire business, website, sales funnels, emails, CRM, all that under one sub account. And then you can bring on two clients to have each one of their own sub accounts, right? Um, and so basically if you're charging, let's say 100, 200, 300, $500 per month per client, like very quickly, you're running your whole business for 97 a month plus two other clients. You're, I mean, you're, you're profitable, like, you know, so quick, it's so easy. And then the 297 a month is amazing because you now went from three sub accounts to unlimited. You can have as many clients that you could ever think of to bring on for 300 bucks, which is absolutely insane as well. Like I, I literally believe that it's like, I literally believe that's absolutely insane. Right. And so you, you know, as many clients as you want. And it, especially if you're not, if you're not selling at scale, that's amazing because you're, you're manually setting up each new client that comes on, on their sub account, but with the, um, the use of snapshots. So snapshots are basically taking one of these accounts and make and having templates built out in it and taking like a snapshot picture of it that you can go and duplicate it to another account. So manually creating a new account is not that difficult. It's just like, it's already loading all the websites, funnels, emails, all, all the templates. And so like, if you're only bringing on, let's say two to five new clients a week, like pretty easy to do and, and very cost effective. Now where the 297 and 497 become different is you're still at unlimited users, but it's where you get into the SaaS mode where creating a new sub account is all automatically done. You can have the snapshot automatically created. It's all automatically done. They can sign up automatically on your website, which if you're doing any type of scale, to me, that's 100% the way to go because you know who wants to set up 100 accounts every single week if you're... You know, even if you, even if you have VAs doing it, it's just, it doesn't make sense. It's not cost effective to pay then $200 more per month, save all the time, effort, energy, manpower, woman power, whatever you want to call it, like of just setting that up. It's, it's a no brainer, right? So that's kind of how I distinguish the plans. Obviously there's some probably nuances that I didn't hit, but at the end of the day, that's kind of it. Yeah. The SaaS plan has um rebilling options where you can create additional blade revenue for yourself based on the usage of text and email and i think we're getting ready to launch or already launched multi-branding so like instead of just Mm -hmm. having one white label brand now you can have multiple brands and things like that multiple plans unlimited limitations on plans so when you feature stack you're not just limited to a baseline of features you can now create one feature or a hundred features and high level has over like 600 features or something crazy yeah. like that. 
Um, which that's that's for all the super nerds, the super advanced, all the all the <laughs> beginners. You, you guys don't need to worry about that stuff quite yet. You don't. Uh, Nimra Khan is asking, "What's the guys and gals? Keep the questions coming. I'm gonna spend the next 10, 15 minutes going through as many questions as I can. So that when we go into day two, um, we're really prepared. Is that is that good enough time for you, uh, Jason? Or you have another call? Yeah, it's great. Yeah, it works. Okay. Yeah. So 10, 15 minutes more. So we're at. 210 Eastern, we'll pr pretty much finish at 230, okay? So Nimra Khan's asking, what's the best way to make a sales video? So I think the question is, what are the things that you should be aware of in, when creating the videos and what are what are some suggestions you, you have on that BSL video? Yeah. So I, I would say the, the there's two things. Um, you got to decide, like, are you going to be like a talking hit, like I'm on this video right here of mine? Um, which I don't know if it's still helpful to keep the slide up. I just, I forgot it was still up. Um, but you got to decide, is it going to be a talking head or is it going to be like the words, like a PowerPoint across the page, right? And the, the words, the PowerPoint across the page that actually converts really well. Um, I like, I did not start this way, but I'm just now comfortable on camera. And so like, it's just easier for me to just like to whip it out. Um, but so like, you got to kind of determine like which, which way you want to do that. And then from there, you want to go with this structure here. Let me just go back to this. Um, if you want to like screenshot this or take quick notes on it. Um, I like the structure of like, and, and this is going to be the same, whether you're talking head or PowerPoint, like how to get, you know, today we're going to show you how to get two to five real estate leads per day. Here's all these other cool people that have done similar things, gotten awesome results. Also, I'm going to show you how to duplicate this and give away these bonuses when you get, you know, started here. And then the content section, that's maybe when, um, if, if you want to go through and, and jump in and show some templates, like maybe you've got ad templates or a sales funnel template or a website template or this or that or whatever it is. Uh, but keeping like the demo of the actual software to a minimum. Um, and then, then in the close, yeah, just um, if you want to, you know, get two to five appointments a week or whatever it is and gets these bonuses, then uh, get started below. So um, I, I, I don't know how much more in depth you're asking or wanting, but um, like, like I said, like I keep it, like I'm sure there's probably video sales letter scripts that are like way higher converting and way better this and that. But like, I don't know, this is just kind of the format that I feel has worked well. Cause like even a lot of YouTube videos are just like, they're kind of mini VSLs in a sense of like, you're hitting a topic, showing something, some, someone, something of value. And then you have some type of call to action, whether it's like, Hey, to get the templates I showed you, click on the link below or like my video, subscribe or whatever, whatever the call, to, you have some type of call to action. Right. So anyway, yeah. I, I ho hope that kind of covered it a little bit. Yeah. And then we also have several workshops. Um, like the one I did with Andy all day was just specifically around webinars and BSL. So take a look at the other workshops and content um, as well. That'll give you some structured guidelines of how to get started. Um, but what I do know about these sales videos from experience with high level as well is it's not about the script. It's about the energy that you're transferring. Like I think even today we have like a, like a really like basic video from Robin Alex that's on like a like a selfie video in our main like flow that just basically says hey if this is too much for you like we'll help you set it up just uh jump into our setup setup fee I think it's like 297 if you want help and it's just like such a basic video totally unscripted Robin like literally shot it in like three minutes and sent it over and that was it and it's still live like four years later and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and thousands of people go through that and it converts because it's very like it's not polished and polished stuff doesn't necessarily work because it's hard to transfer the energy to the to the recipient well right and that's the one thing i don't like about ai is people could differentiate the energy of the realness versus the scripted polished look and i don't know what it is and i think our, our human nature we have that innate capability to understand when someone talk is talking to you to determine and kind of filter out what you want to take out of what they're saying to you or what kind of a 
place they're coming from or whether they're being truthful, whether they're being fake. Like we had this sense uh, and that sensitivity ma you know, matters a lot in, in funnel creation, video creation, content creation. Um, let's see. Um, Alan Sims is asking, follow up to that, what is the average churn slash retention rate with affiliates versus SaaS? I think that's a deeper question because <laughs> like in, yeah. in the affiliate world, we don't allow anybody to transfer affiliates or cancel, you know, an, a, a person that they came in through. So essentially it shouldn't be much of a churn from our standpoint. Um, but I guess the question is like uh, when they shop around or well, how do they determine that? Or do you have any stats on that or any kind of mark that you look for? Um, so like, I know Paulson, you went to MBA school and the big joke, I remember I didn't go to MBA school, but business school, the big joke is always, the answer is it depends. <laughs> it's like <laughs> that, it that's the answer. It depends. Um, Really, it depends. Like it, like even affiliate game, and I don't know the statistics of this, but I would just assume from just like being in the game long enough that like I'm sure each affiliate has different churn metrics, uh, churn data based on like what audience they're going after, what's being sold, what's promised, how it's you know fulfilled, um, and then even the same on like SaaS, like. Um, if someone's like a seasoned business owner and they like have systems and everything dialed in, like their churn's obviously going to be a lot better than someone that's like trying to figure it out, which, which there's nothing wrong with either one, but like, um, it, it long story short, it's just going to pend. Right. And I know that's not the answer you're looking for. I know you're looking like, I want these metrics, all that stuff, but like, <laughs> it just depends on like how, like you sell somebody something like, let's say, let's go along with that two to five real estate leads per day. Well, if at the end of the 30 days, they're getting one real estate lead per day, yeah. they're probably going to be pissed, right? Yeah. And so it's like, it's kind of like managing expectations with the sales message, with the fulfillment and like, and how well are you fulfilling or actually taking care of the customer? Are they getting responses from support, emails, chats, all that's like, there's a lot that goes into it. And so it kind of just depends on like how people are fulfilling on that. Yeah. I think, I think the bigger question, Alan, that you should ask is, what are what is what are affiliates doing or versus SaaS people are doing to stabilize the incoming traffic, right? So, like one thing I can tell you internally, looking at all the affiliate SaaSpreneurs, there are certain styles that stabilize better. For example, like an affiliate that has education based content out there, when they do take on a affiliate agency or a user that user usually goes through our trial or that initial ramp up experience in a much more stable way versus someone who just sold the link, right? Or like, let's say for example, um, you as an affiliate, you have like a ton of courses that are not even relevant to high level, but you just have a ton of courses that you're selling. That type of person versus someone who has a high level relevant course there's a huge difference in how those users stabilize in our trial. I, I know that internally from studying and learning multiple different types of avatars. And the same thing applies for SaaSpreneurs. SaaSpreneurs out there, if you go out to the local market um, and you provide relevant education to that local market, that's relevant to like the real estate agents. Like if you have a course around real estate agents and you onboard a ton of real estate people, your stability in for the trial is a whole lot different than the broad stroke of going after everybody right so those types of things i, I i've noticed a lot jason any add-on two, yeah that? two things i'll add really quick to that because um i would 100 agree when i first started promoting high level i wasn't even planning on promoting high level i had just made a youtube video and put the high level link in the video and I was like, whoa, I'm getting signups. And I was like getting, you know, I don't know how many signups. It was probably um, a lot less than I'm remembering. But I was getting all, I was getting these signups and none of them were sticking. And I was like, what the heck, man? Like, is it just the software? Is this crap or what's going on? Like, that's before I even like, I had never used high level myself. Um, and But I, I was like, man, okay, well, I got to figure it. If I'm getting signups, like without even really trying, I'm like, I got I to gotta figure this out. 
And so I kind of talked to some people that were canceling. They're like, well, I don't like, I don't know what to do. Like I signed up, but I don't know what the software is. Like you don't have any training on it. And I was like, all right, light bulb. I was like, I'm taking the next six weeks, not doing anything besides learning the software. I went and built out, rebuilt out my entire business in there. And was like trying to figure it all out, made a course on the whole entire program. And then I started presenting my affiliate link and I had the whole course of like, showing how to use like everything was ingrained with high level and now it's starting to get signups and yeah for sure you, you still get some churn or like people that don't convert from sign up to paid customer but i was actually getting paid users at this point and i was like okay that's that was a big difference and then i would say number two what's a huge factor with churn um which we did with um in in my real estate crm and i do now is an initial done for you setup um, so like most people are lazy and don't take action, me included. I'm probably lazier than most. Um, and what we noticed was, so like kind of going back to like Paulson mentioned challenges, one of our top converting sales funnels was a 30 day real estate lead challenge, which gave them 30 days free access to our software. And it was, you know, our templates, all this stuff. And we said, we're going to help you get 15 leads in the next 30 days. Right. And so um, we gave them all the training, the templates, everything for 97 bucks. And then we said, you know, we had a, like a one click upsell for a hundred bucks to have our team set it up for them. And we saw like a 60, 65% take rate of that one click upsell. And, um, and the people that didn't take it, we noticed they, none of them were setting their stuff up. So none of them were getting leads and they were all mad and they would cancel. So we're like, well, if 65% of people take it. Why don't we just make it part of the offer? And just make it a $200 30-day lead challenge. We're going to set up your campaign for you. We're going to make sure you get results. We're going to make sure, like, we're going to force results on you, basically, right? And so then, you know, every single person that would sign up on that, we'd have a member of our team go and set it up. So we knew it was set up the right way. We knew it was actually being set up. Because if, if it's not being set up, there's no way they're, you know, they're going to get results anyway. And then at the end of the 30 days, um, the... The results were were insane. And then on top of that, that was like our number one, like converting into lifetime value. That was our number one sales funnel because it was only 200 bucks. It was a low ticket entry, but it was like combined with a done for you setup. And so it was like, hey, we'll take care of all this for you, right? And um, so they saw results out of the gate and it was set up the right way. So then now month two, month three, month four, it's still set up the right way. They'll still get results and they're still happy, right? So I think- kind of, yeah, the course thing. And then as much, and, and I know a lot of people try to get into SaaS because they're like, I don't want to do the done for you stuff. Literally like a little 30 minute to 60 minute done for you initial account setup can be the difference of someone churning after one month or staying on for 12 to 18 plus months. Yeah. Just that you know, one you know what's, thing. You know what's insane is I just want to congratulate the 500 people that are in the Zoom and like another 200 people that stayed through to hear the point we just made. Because I think that's one of the most powerful lessons that we've learned here at High Level that costs us millions of dollars is the, the way we stabilize a user. It's not about conversion. After the idea of you solving for conversion, which is lead generation, then you put the sales into place and convert them. After that conversion point, you have to have a strategy in stabilizing. And what that does is allow you to think about how do they come in, right? If they came in through a course or some kind of an educational medium, like it makes a huge difference versus them just taking on the offer, right? And I think that's what you have to do when it comes to SaaS as well, right? You, see, you have to stable, you have to figure out a way to stabilize them. And that's the key because there's no point in converting without stickiness. It's almost worse to convert if you know that they're not going to stick with you because you just burned through that lead. You just burned through that relationship. It's almost yep. like you dated the girl that you knew you wanted to marry, but you didn't have a way for her to stick around. And you, you just gave her the wrong impression and she went out the door I'm like there's no chance for you to get that person back and yep. that's what that's what i see when it comes to the SaaS world this all marketers a lot of agency owners were focused on the conversion point which is of course appreciated but the real point in SaaS is 
the 14 to 30 day mark of they finally crossing essentially Jordan of trial to paid. And what happens after that paid uh, experience is, you know, essentially starting. And for you to do that as an affiliate, as a SaaS entrepreneur, you have to compete. You have to compete in ways that you nobody else can compete. So you have to create content that's relevant to your prospects. You have to create resources that's relevant to, you know, like uh, one thing I'll tell you about, you know, the Hermosi, the Kaplan, the Billy Jean style is they'd like to give away the farm, right? They give everything away without charging a ton of things for it. And, uh, and Jason's kind of similar too. He likes to give away a lot of things because what it does is, you don't have to worry as much about the inbound traffic that's being converted. And I don't want to, you know, beat the dead horse here, but this, what we're sharing is a multi-million dollar lesson. And it wasn't even part, it wasn't even planned to even talk about. Like that's not even part of the agenda that we had today uh, in general, but I just wanted to just, you know, reiterate that point. Jason, what can we expect on day two? Give us like a preview agenda as we kind of close out today. Yeah. So day two. So now that we got the sales funnel kind of idea, identified who our audience is, it's all about grabbing eyeballs and send them to this sales funnel. Um, so we're going to talk about um, how to basically create a consistent flow of lead gen. Kind of, so you have consistent daily leads and yeah, maybe it's not going to be a hundred, 200 leads per day starting out, but imagine if it was just even one lead per day, a lot of people aren't getting any leads per day. So it's like, if you just have like consistent new leads coming in every single day, three leads, five leads, 10 leads. And, um, I'll actually share you guys with you guys, a very cool story. How, um, started getting over hundred, well over hundred leads per day from, um, a brand new account, zero ad spend, zero push from anything. And, uh, actually it took me about three days to figure out where this was all coming from. But, uh, I'll share with you guys behind the scenes of, of how that all happened and how you guys can uh, clone what uh, what that little method was. I love it. And and it is possible uh, to create that kind of a traffic inbound. And if you can crack the code on that and just implement a couple of things, you're going to be in a different place. And I, here's what I recommend for all of you that are watching this workshop. Um, some of you that are advanced, you know, you want more strategy and more things that you can go out. And some of you that are starting out, maybe you're in the beginning stages, a lot of the content could be overwhelming that we're sharing. But I, I recommend that you find maybe one or two things that you're going to decide that you're going to implement. And that's all it takes. Like even when I go to a mastermind or an event, like my focus is what is the one or two things that I'm going to just just grab hold of it that I'm going to implement in my business. That's going to change a lot of things. Those of you that are watching, there's going to be replays available in the YouTube channel, high levels, YouTube channel. So go there. Um, our offer. So Jason word or wardrobes offer is essentially you get all these good goodies and things. If you jump into the trial, especially if you don't have a account with high level and you can jump into, I believe either the 97 or the 297. So when you click on that link, click on new, new customers. If you already have an existing account, you can click on the existing and upgrade under him as well. Then you get the bonuses. But if, if you don't want to upgrade, that's no problem. Come Thursday, we'll have a direct link for you if you have an existing account already. And that's going to be direct links to like snapshots and things like that. So regardless, you have to have a high level account anyway to use some of those things. Uh, but anyways, same time tomorrow, 12 p.m. EST. Tomorrow's going to be heavy. Today was kind of essentially just setting the foundations of building these things. Tomorrow's going to be heavy. Uh, be sure to put away maybe a couple of hours, maybe two or three hours with Q&A and all that. Uh, recordings will be available to you guys uh, on the YouTube channel. In case if you signed up, I think you will get replay DBR emails tonight from what I understand from the marketing team. Uh, but any any final thoughts as we close out day one, Jason? No, man. I'm just uh, excited. Appreciate you guys having me and uh, excited to be on back tomorrow and share with you guys some more cool stuff. Okay. Awesome. We'll see you tomorrow. Again, the link to sign up under Jason is www.gohighlevel.com slash Jason dash wardrobe dash offer. And if you don't have a high level account, jump into a 
uh, an account under Jason, you'll get a ton of the bonuses that are part of this workshop. We'll drop the link in the comments as well. Uh, but anyways, see you tomorrow at 12 p.m. EST. That's Eastern Standard Time, New York time. Uh, for those of you that are international watching, we appreciate you staying up late. Hopefully we can run some events that is going to be daytime for you here in the next uh, future. I'm working on that. Replays again will be in the high level YouTube channel. See ya. Bye everybody. See you tomorrow for day two. Thanks guys. We'll see ya.